Welcome to Looking at Legal Stuff. Today we have 14 hearings in a case with a couple where mom is accusing dad of everything under the sun, including DV, harassment, and drug use, and she wants dad to have supervised visitation. Dad says none of that is true, and mom is being toxic and vindictive because of their divorce and accuses her of wanting him to keep paying all her bills. Let's see what the commissioner thinks of this mess. All right, that brings us uh, to the last case, which is Mills and Mills. I see Rebecca Mills is here, and I suspect Mr. Mills is uh, here in the, the Zoom booth. Correct, Your Honor. There are um, two matters on the docket. One is a, a protection order um, issue, which doesn't really belong here, but it's here. And then also there's a motion for temporary orders. Um, let me ask some questions before we start, just to help me uh, understand where things are at. Um, so where, where are the children right now? They're with me. Okay. And uh, is that pursuant to a protection order that has been entered or has that just been the case? Um, I did try to include them in the protection order. Um, it looks like they weren't and we were going to decide with this hearing where that fell. Okay. And how long have... Uh, how long has it been since um, Mr. Mills has seen the children or had any contact? Um, I got the children on February 1st. Um, and he was supposed to get them back around the 9th or the 10th. Um, and I found what I believe was steroids. Um, he has a long history of steroid use and other substances, um, including an arrest. And I was not comfortable giving the kids over to him for the visitation that we had agreed on. Um, he did see them on the 25th, briefly at his sister's house. 25th of February? Yes. Tell me, uh, Ms. Mills, what you'd like to see going forward. Um, I In, feel... Say the next month or two. I feel very strongly about um, supervised visits. Um, my reasoning for this is there's been a history of this the substance abuse. Um, there's been domestic violence in our relationship. Um, negligence um, towards the children. Um, I would love supervised visits every other weekend. Um, my reasoning for this is he's always been supervised. I have been the primary parent since the day my children were born. Um, he trusted me to be the stay at home mom with our children. He trusted me for five years to do that. I don't see why anything should change now. Um, also, I <laughs> Samuel's scheduled allowed for him 30 minutes, maybe a day to spend with the children and be available to them. Um, he would spend two hours at the gym and come home and have 30 minutes while he was packing his lunch and um, eating his breakfast and showering that he was available to the children. I added that up over two weeks. That is seven hours every two weeks. So I feel very strongly about supervised visits. Every Who would you have be the supervisor? Um, I'm comfortable with his sister, Angela Lockyer. What's her last name again? 
lock year. Okay. Okay. All right, Mr. Mills, um, I'd like to hear um, your response. Um, so the steroids, that was a mistake I've made in the past. I haven't steroids. And she said she thinks she found, she found a novelty sticker. I believe there's photos included of that. The uh, novelty sticker on it says one gallon. You're supposed to put it on a water jug and drink out of it as a joke. A friend gave it to me. And then she found a pill in a bag that was a painkiller because I don't have health insurance. And one of the times when I was watching the children, um, they got hand, foot, mouth and gave it to me. And so I had lacerations on my tongue, mouth, throat, and I couldn't even drink water. It hurt so bad. So my, my dad gave me old painkillers. I took them for a day and a half until the lacerations the laceration started to heal enough to where it was tolerable. And then I didn't finish them. And that was in the cupboard, but I have, she's trusted me with the kids. She left me with the kids when they were, all of us were sick. So she could go spend time with her new boyfriend that she met online and she would be in and out. She had no problem leaving me with the kids while she was sleeping over there. What time frame are we talking about? Um, December through January up until February when she went to my house and believed she found steroids and then decided to just not let me have my children because we had a verbal agreement to be trading the kids every five days. And we had been following that. Um, but I don't believe that Rebecca is emotionally stable. I believe she's bipolar. And on the day that happened, my mother was in the house before she started rummaging for things to try and make a case out of i put new photos on the wall of me and my children and my mother said she saw her look at them and could see rage in her face and then as soon as my mother left that's when she started digging to try and find any excuse to not let me see my kids oh may i just if i ordered supervised visits um, for a short period of time, would your sister, um, would that work out with your sister? She would be okay with that, but I don't believe that it's necessary because Rebecca had no issue letting me have the kids for about two months. Like just, we would be trading days. She had no issue with that. She was not, she did not treat me as if I was an unfit parent. She trusted me to do it all. And then now she's just trying to make sure that she has a case against me and makes me look as horrible as possible. Okay. Ms. Mills, any response? Um, I did put in my reply the dates in January that I had the children. I feel like he is making it sound like, oh, I just left for two months. Um, I had the children January 2nd through 5th, January 12th through 17th, January 22nd through the 26th of January. And in his motion, he claimed that I neglected them, um, that I left for two weeks. I was never gone for two weeks. I was the children, uh, the times he didn't have them. What was that? Sorry. Were the children with Mr. Mills when you did not have them? Yes, they were. Okay. And they were with him until I found some things around the house that were very concerning. Um, and your honor, may I address something? Um, yeah, briefly. And then um, I'll, I'll tell you what I think we need to do at this point, but go ahead. The 30 minutes a day thing isn't true. I would wake up before everybody and I would go to the gym. And then inevitably, while I was finishing up at the gym, everyone would wake up. I'd come home. I'd eat breakfast. I'd visit. I'd get ready to go to work. And then I'd go to work. But when I'd come home in the evening, I'd still be with my kids. I'd still bathe them. I'd still put them to bed. So that's just not true. All right. Um, so like the last case where there's um, issues regarding uh, 
uh, the children, um, I typically will appoint a guardian ad litem to investigate the situation. So we need to do that in this case. We already have one. Oh, who is that? Um, I'm not sure, but I know that we have a date set for that already. This is news to me, Your Honor. I've I don't think it's appointed in this case. I don't. I I've been served multiple paper papers. None of them mention a guardian ad litem. I'm looking through my papers now. Uh, I, let me, I let me, might. Have, my mother helped me fill some of these out because I've been working. There might be a new one that I filed. If any, that your mother filed. Is there a GAL? There is not a GAL appointed. There is a motion to appoint a GAL. Oh. Okay. Um, there's a motion to appoint a GAL. Oh, okay. Sorry. Makes sense. Um, I think that's where we need to go at this point. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's take care of that appointment right now. And then I want to tell you how we'll deal with visitation. Um, for at least four weeks going forward. Um, um, so we're going to give you three names. Uh, if you know any of these people, let me know. If not, then I'll tell you who we'll go with. Go ahead. Tina Day. Excuse me? Tina Day. Okay. Tina Day. Twyla Corey. Twyla Corey. And Keith Lawrence. Do any of you know any of those folks? Okay. So um, I'm going to appoint Tina Day. I will usually just take the top name on that rotation. She will be reaching out to both of you. Um, at this point, um, I'm going to require that you both pay one half of her fee. If you feel you can't afford that, you can file a financial declaration in this case, and I can consider whether to have the county pay part of the fee. Okay. Okay. So I've reviewed both the protection order request and the um, temporary order uh, in the family law case. Uh, the protection order is case number 23-2-0018308, then the family law matter is 23-3-0007208. In the protection order case, there were um, concerning texts that basically amounted to threats. And um, based on that, I think um, supervised visits at this time make sense. Um, I'm not saying that that's going to be the case forever. I'm not saying that anybody's a bad parent here. Um, I'm just saying that those texts raise concerns for the court. So um, I'm going to order visitation. Um, if I don't know what the um, sister's schedule is if she can stay overnight uh, with the children then I'm okay with the Saturday to Sunday say Saturday at 10 to Sunday at 6 if she can't stay overnight then it's going to have to be just a daytime visit but whenever the children are with Mr. Mills um, until our next review date the sister will need to be the supervisor um, can I make a comment I um, she is a stay at home mother and um, I am completely comfortable with the with the children spending the night there if she's open to it. And I don't care how late Samuel stays as long as they're supervised by his sister. OK, I'm, I'm open to it. So you're OK with both the sister and the mother? Um, am I saying that right? You said no, not the mother. No. He said there's a stay-at-home who? Uh, his sister is a stay-at-home mom, so her availability oh, is pretty open. A, and they live together? No. They don't? Okay. 
So where, where are you expecting these visitations to take place? At her home is what I would like. At her home overnight. Yes. Yes. If okay. she's open to overnight, if not, the schedule is fine. All right. I'm going to be a little more specific here. So if the sister is available and willing, then the visits can be Saturday at 10 to Sunday at 6. Yes. Okay. If the sister's not available, then I'm going to order. Well, if she's not available for overnight, uh, she still needs to be present. Yes. Your Honor, if I may. Just a minute. Then I think we're looking at Saturday from 10 to 6 um, every other week. Go ahead, Mr. Mills. Um, I mean, my mother is competent and she is able to stay the night with me and supervise. Absolutely not. Um, I'm at this point, I'm going to uh, take the recommendation of, of Ms. Mills. Again, all of this can change once the guardian ad litem gets a chance to talk to everybody. But um, I'm going to take the recommendation of Ms. Mills at this point. So um, what about um, um, sometimes we allow telephone visits in between any um, has there been any telephone or he, video visits? He has not asked about them. He hasn't asked for a phone call. He hasn't asked for a photo. Um, our children have been sick off and on since Christmas. I mean, with one thing or another, I'm, I'm sure us splitting up has done a lot on their little immune systems. Um, but I mean, he knew our son was sick and didn't check in once. Um, I am open to a video call. I'm I'm open to it but I have okay. an effort. Your honor. Go ahead. Um, that's not true. I, I have texted her and I have proof of a text saying, please let me see my children. And it didn't go over well. And so I stopped asking and that's why I'm here today because at talk asking causes fights. So okay. I trained from time. that. All right. Well, I, I've, I've ruled how I want the visits to go. Um, I would, uh, uh, I would like, uh, I'll, I'll agree to one video visit um, a week. So there should be, uh, every week there should be a vid video visit. Okay, about uh, how long? Are you able to communicate either by text or some, or is there some protection order that prevents you from doing um, that? I have a no contact order. Um, let's go through the sister, I guess. And um, you can arrange uh, video visits that way. Okay. Um, okay. And, then I, I and have let's have the first weekend of these visits, um, March 11th and 12th. Uh, and that will give everybody a chance to prepare for that. That's the in-person? In-person with the sister overnight. Did you say 11th and 12th? 11th, March 11th to Sunday the 12th. Okay, thank you. Your Honor. Every other weekend. So the next one would be the 24th and 25th. I'd like I'd like to be back here on March 29th with everybody. Okay. We're gonna see how those visits have gone, and the guardian ad litem may not have um all of her research done, but we may have some. So okay. we can see what direction we're going to go. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I have a question. I have an order that was provided for the 15th hearing. Can you sign that and we can do that? So I have a hearing separate for that GIA. Oh, you have a hearing set, I guess, on um, April. 15th to appoint a GAL on March 15th. So we're taking care of that now. Okay, so don't show so up. We're going to strike that hearing. And I'll go through your order um, when I'm done here in, in um, appointing a day. Okay. Thank you. I have a question. 
Okay, briefly, yes. Um, about the visitation, are there any forms we have to fill out or filing that with the court or anything, or we just handle it on our own? Yeah, handle it on your own. I'm going to do what's called a bench order, which will outline what I've ruled. If you need to come up and get a copy of that so that you have um, an order in your hand, that, that will be fine. Okay. All right. Okay, when... Miss Day contacts both of you. Um, it's it's best to cooperate uh, as much as you can. That helps the court out, and we can move this forward as soon as possible. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you both. We'll see you back here on March 29th. Thank you. Okay. Rebecca Mills. Hello, Your Honor. Thanks. Ms. Mills, you brought a motion to waive uh, the guardian ad litem fees. Yes. Let me find that. Uh, I know there was an order here. There we go. All right, I'm going to grant that order. Thank you, Your Honor. And I want to talk to you about something else here in a minute. Okay. Uh, are you on um, some form of public assistance? Yes. What is that? Um, food stamps and TANF, and I'm also receiving WIC. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I've signed uh, that order waiving that. Here's what I wanted to talk to you about is I've got two cases. One is Samuel Mills versus Rebecca Mills. And the other is Rebecca Mills versus Samuel Mills. And as far yes. as I can tell, they both deal with the same thing, which is yes. disillusion. Yes. And uh, it seems to me those cases should be consolidated. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay. <clears throat> and is, is Samuel Mills here? All right. Um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to consolidate them. I guess under the... Um, The earlier case. So one is uh, 00072, the other 00077. I'm going to consolidate them under the 72 case. Okay. And then I'm probably going to have to do an amended um, GAL appointment indicating that uh, it'll be county pay for. Got it. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. And I wanted to make the court aware, I've not had any response from Mr. Mills. So I'm going to send out a second letter giving him a date certain to respond by. And if I receive no response, then I would just file the report based on the information from mother and that I've already gathered and submit for payment from the county. He's not participated yet, and I don't know that he's going to. Okay. All right. So. Um... On the Mills case, then, I'm going to do an order to consolidate the two cases. I've signed the order waiving uh, the guardian ad litem fee. I'm going to change the appointment to uh, reflect that it's county pay. And Ms. Day is going to make one more attempt to get a hold of Mr. Mills. If not, um, she'll do a report um, based on what she knows, I guess. Um, how long out should we set the review hearing this day? Um, I think it'll probably take me 30 days to get the report finished. So I'd say 60 days. So, 
So that puts us to about May 24th. Yep. Okay. All right, Ms. Mills, then we'll be back here on um, May 24th to uh, consider Ms. Day's report and make uh, additional decisions at that time. Okay, um, I have a quick question, if that's okay. Sure. Um, we have a vehicle that I've been driving. Um, I'm not sure when is the best time to address this. I know we kind of have a lot going on. Um, I've been driving a vehicle um, for a couple of years now. It's in my possession. Um, but it's all in Samuel's name. And you'd like it to be moved over into your name? I would like for him to be ordered to continue paying it like he has been and keep the insurance on it and keep making the car payment as he always has. All right. Typically, that would be addressed uh, by having you file a motion for temporary orders. Okay. Request that. Okay. And you can do that on this docket. I won't give you the date, but if you can get those, uh, get that motion, and it may be the only thing on there is to require that he continue to pay the car payment and the insurance on that vehicle. Okay. Um, then we can address it at that time. But I think Mr. Mills is um, entitled to notice of that. Okay. Here before decisions made. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right. I think that's it. Thank you. And file that under the 00072 matter. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Your Honor. Rebecca Mills and Samuel Mills. Looks like we have both here. Yes. I'm present. All right, thank you. Let me get to my notes here. <laughs> There's two matters on um, the family law matter. And it looks like, um, uh, I don't know if she's with us. Um, uh, Christina Day is the guardian ad litem. Um, and then there's also a um, anti-harassment order matter that was put on this docket. And I think my notes show that there was supervised visits um, ordered. And I was wondering how those were going, if they were going. Uh, Your Honor, I've only been able to see my kids once. I was not able to see them last week because my sister was and her kids were sick. Um, but the one meeting we had went really well. Let me, I guess, start here. Um, Ms. Mills, are you still seeking an anti-harassment order? Yes. <laughs> I, I thought that I had one already. Yeah, let me, uh, let me just check here uh, the status of that. So what I had done is I reissued the temporary order um, until today. Let's see if that was me. Yeah, that was me. Okay. Well, we need to re resolve that issue. So, um, what I'm going to do is have a hearing on that anti harassment um, order request. And um, the way I do that is I'm going to place Ms. Mills under oath and have her tell me why she feels an anti-harassment order is necessary. 
And then Mr. Mills, you'll have a chance to respond. And then Ms. Mills, you'll have a chance to reply to whatever Mr. Mills says. Okay. So let's do that uh, before we then go to the family law matter and see if that has any effect on that. So Ms. Mills, if you'll raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in these proceedings? Yes. Okay. What is your full name, please? Rebecca Larie Mills. Okay. And is everything that you stated in your petition for the anti-harassment order true and correct? Yes. All right, tell the court in your own words why you would like an anti-harassment order entered. Um, the main reason being um, he has made threats, um, many, many threats I'm, for years and, and more so today now that we're separate. Um, I'm not quite sure how to word this. <laughs> um, I have a past um, and it's um, of sexual nature um, that I, I don't want him telling people about. He's threatening to tell friends, family members, um, awful things. Um, and then also we have had a past of domestic violence that I, I still fear today. All right, thank you. Mr. Mills, I, I need to place you under oath. I want to raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in these proceedings? Yes, Your Honor. All right, thank you. What is your full name, please? Samuel Paul Mills. You've had a chance to review Ms. Mills petition in this case? Yes, I have. Okay. And you just heard her uh, comments. Um, if you'd like to respond, um, this would be the time to do that. Um, so what she says with the violence is not fully true. She has been the one to hit me and I have defended myself. And she has on those occasions when I pushed her off me or grabbed her to stop her from hitting me, threatened to call the police and saying, who are they going to believe? You're the big man and I'm the little girl. And with the exposing the past, it's that's nothing I would ever do. We would have toxic fights all the time. And I would say that because I knew it bothered her. That's not, that's not a reflection on my character. I've never done that. And it's not something I would do. And I'm not a violent person. I'm not an angry person, but Rebecca and I, we didn't get along and we brought out the worst in each other. I have no desire to spread what she has done. That is her business. I made a stupid statement out because if you got around to reading my response to it, she was harassing me and I said those things to get her to stop. And then another, the one other time when I said it was because she was taking my kids from me and I said it out of fear of not seeing my kids. If it were something that I truly would have done, Rebecca and I were together for seven years. I would have done it. I've never done it. You did send texts threatening to do that, right? I did do that. Um, I'm looking but, at one and I'm, I'm going to read it um, just so anybody reviewing the record will know what I'm referring to. Um, it says, uh, do something or we'll go down this route. And Robert will throw your uh, throw you out, um, and then she responds, "You have a history," and then you respond, "Yeah, you have a history too. Years of porn on the internet. I'll just tell everyone 
Robert will throw you the F out because he'll be humiliated. So you don't deny that that was, you wrote that. I did write that, but it was just out of fear of not seeing my kids. Okay. Did you ever get a chance to review my response and how she would speak to me? I'm looking for that in the file. Maybe let me, I've read both files. I, I don't see a, a response in this particular one. Let me go um, look at the, Motion for family Um, sir i i i don't see it in the file i i accept what you testified to today however um so i'm, I'm not disputing what you're telling me okay i really hope you consider that i'm not a threat to rebecca i think she is just using this as an easy way to maintain custody of our children And many of the evidence or much of the evidence she has put in her harassment is years old and not even relevant. Has um, Christina Day reached out to either of you at this point? Yes. I have spoke with her and she said the soonest she could meet with me was April 5th. Okay. All right, Ms. Mills, um, I'm, uh, you, you have a chance to reply to what Mr. Mills said. Um, I, I don't feel safe him being able to contact me. Um, as far as things being years old, um, sure, some of it was, but some of it was, I mean, just months ago um, when we split or months before we split. Um, it was not all many years ago and I think that it just speaks to his character and um him as a parent what I just read um how long ago was it that that said just months ago that text um he's threatened to send those to my father which Who is Robert uh, that's my boyfriend okay and he knows about all of that. It, it's just, why threaten? I... In the current uh, protection order statute, uh, there, there are a number of definitions of what constitutes harassment. And recently, um, they added um, a section called coercive language. And what it's trying to get at is that um, even though there may not be any physical harm between the couple, um, that one party 
uses language intended to take away the free will of the other couple, or the other party. Your Honor. Uh, it, it's my okay. turn now, Mr. Mills. And uh, the text I read, and, I, and there were others that were similar. I think there was a threat to contact Ms. Mills' boss uh, was another one. Um, was couched in a way of wanting Ms. Mills to do something. You know, it, it basically amounted to, if you don't do what I want, then I'm going to tell Robert. And if you don't do what I want, then I'm going to let your past be known. Um, and under the current statute, that meets the definition of coercive language. And based on that, um, I think a anti-harassment order um, is, um, is warranted. So um, that's going to um, prevent you from having um, contact with each other. Um, it's going to prevent you, um, I'm going to specifically prevent any um, disclosure of um, any facts about Ms. Mills' life in any way. Um, I guess the question is, um, we have a child involved, and so is there two children? Um, um, Ms. Mills, um, how would you propose uh, communication regarding visitation and other things relating to the children? Um, we were going through his sister, Angela Lockyer, who is supervising the visits, um, and she has asked to be removed from communication. She doesn't want to do the back and forth between he and I. Um, so I have been using my boyfriend, Robert, um, which seems to be going well. There's not very much communication, but I think the points get across pretty clear. Mr. Mills, are you comfortable uh, communicating through Robert? I don't mind. I He is slow to respond and sometimes just won't, and I have to reach out to other people, so that's frustrating. I, I just want to review something from the last time we were together. Just give me a moment. This is uh, just a minute. I'm talking to somebody. This is the family law docket. Hi, Paul. Sure. If um, the sister is not available to supervise the visits, is there somebody else that can do that? No. Your Honor, I really don't think supervised visits is necessary. I am not a danger to my children. And she didn't think that for months. When she left me, she left the kids with me for a week at a time to go stay with her boyfriend. So here's what I'm, here's my position. 
I want to hear a report from the guardian ad litem and height before I'm willing to consider unsupervised visits. So that's going to be a few weeks. And until we get there, um, I'm going to allow supervised visits. But we have to agree on a supervisor or um, then you know, you're probably going to be limited to the video calls. Well, I think I, I know that's frustrating, but um, I I make decisions that that I hope protect the children, and I need more information right now before I can um, I can okay. consider unsupervised visits. I still think my sister was fine with the kids coming over on the weekends. She just didn't want to be the center yeah. of our communication. Okay, we'll leave that in place. She won't be the, the go-between. I'll let Robert be the go-between. I know that that's, that's gotta be a bit uncomfortable, but if it works, then let's do that. Um, and um, Ms. Mills, I've indicated the visits are overnight, Saturday at 10 to Sunday at six at Ms. Locklear's home and I, um, and that's every other weekend. I want you to cooperate with that, okay? Um, I have a question. Yes. Um, so Angela, she does church twice a day on Sundays, and she has kind of expressed to me that she can't do Sundays anymore. Um, so I don't know if you can put in an order, um, just stating Saturdays only just to make things less complicated and straightforward for all parties involved. I feel like there's been a lot of confusion. Um, you know, what time she begins, uh, these church services. I know she goes to a morning service and an evening service and it's. In. Well, I, I'm. At this point, not willing to take away the overnight uh, with Mr. Mills. I think that's an important time to be with the children. He, uh, sorry. Go as, ahead. As far as I understand, he's not staying the night. Only the children are staying the night and he's returning on Sunday. So last, my last visit, I tucked them in. And then when they were asleep, I left. Where do you go when you leave? I just go back home. Because I don't want to sleep on a couch. Angela has told me she doesn't want to do Sundays anymore. So. Well, then. My inclination is to move it to Friday to Saturday. Is that a possibility for you, Mr. Mills? I work on Fridays, but I could go over after work and see them. When are you done with work? Um, it varies. I work construction, so it depends on what work we're doing. Um, typically 3.30, sometimes 5.30. I'm inclined to move it to um, Friday at 6 p.m. So we know you're done with your job until Saturday at, I guess we'd have to go Saturday at 6 p.m. Um, let's go with that. Your Honor, I, I'm sorry. I, Again, I, I I would like to preserve an overnight visit for for you and your children. I I appreciate that. Go ahead. Um, I just I have concerns with her with my kids at her house. At whose house? With Rebecca and her boyfriend. I haven't had an opportunity to bring it up yet. 
so I, okay, um, I'll, I'll listen to it, go ahead. I don't believe it's a stable environment. I have, his best friend is my cousin and I've spoke with him and he has said before that he's not sure he wants Rebecca and that they've had multiple fights just last week or so. The two of them went to my sister's house to get an old couch of Rebecca's and they were arguing and then Rebecca yelled at him and said, I'll just go sit in the truck and went and sat in the truck and made him load the couch by himself. I don't know how much they're fighting in front of the kids. It, I don't know. I'm sorry, that's bogus. It was missed by my family. All right. Um, I, I will. Um, two things. I'll encourage Miss Mills and her boyfriend not to argue in front of the kids. I understand some relationships communicate through argument. And if that is the case, just don't, don't do it in front of the kids. Second of all, uh, Mr. Mills, bring this up to Ms. Height and so that she can look into it further, okay? Can I speak for a moment? Okay. Yes, um, please. So we picked this couch up at his sister Angela's house and Angela was the only one present. Um, the statements that he just made are completely false. I helped him load. I was in the back of the truck loading it the entire time. The entire time we entered the truck at the same time. And this makes me so concerned to even be around his family at this point. If there's going to be false statements made about me dropping my kids off. I was already on the fence. I was going to say things and I, I, I held back. Um, but now I'm very concerned about taking my kids there and me even being there at all. I'm not going to change um, my orders um, based on this. Um, so I'm, I'm still going to leave the Friday to Saturday um, visit with Mr. Mills. I'm going to leave Ms. Locklear as the supervisor. All of this needs to be discussed with Ms. Height. And then when we get a report, I'll, I'll consider where we go from there. Okay. All right. Let um, me see if I can figure out when we're coming back. I need to look at the guardian ad litem uh, order. I don't have a date in there. Um, why don't we come back on uh, May 3rd at nine o'clock. That will be about a month from now. I wanna know how the supervised visits were going and we'll get an update from Ms. Height on that or um, Ms. Uh, Christina Day, I'm sorry, on that day. Okay. I wanted to bring up a few things, if that's okay. Um, go ahead. Um, I have belongings still at Samuel's house. Um, they're in a storage shed. I never had a chance to collect those things. Um, I have also asked for children's toys and some of their belongings, and he refused. Um, something like comfort items that my kids are wanting. Um, and also I'm very concerned about, um, we have a vehicle that I've been driving since we've gotten it. Um, it's in my possession. It's a 2018 Kia Soul. Um, Samuel has let me know that he has stopped making payments on it. He has taken the insurance off of it and I should expect for it to be repossessed. Um, I need a car to transport the children around, and I think that he should be paying it as he always has. If I may respond to that. I yeah, finish. you can't. Let me finish my notes here. He also took um, our tax return. He did not tell me how much it was. He filed. I had a small income that he filed also, um, and he took it. I don't know how much it was, but I don't know why it didn't go to paying my car and keeping it current for our children. 
Okay, any other issues? Um, uh, child support. Okay. All right, may I respond? Yes, Mr. Mills, go ahead. Um, on the subject of the Kia, I, I did not remove the insurance. I simply couldn't afford to pay it to renew it and it lapsed. And I told her that when it happened, I said, hey, I can't afford this. And then with the Kia, I haven't paid it because I can't afford it. Rebecca used to live here. She used to bring in some income and I had more money to spend. I per hour right now and making a little bit more than I used to, but I'm driving to Portland every day and I'm being taxed harder. So I have less money. And so I simply can't afford that car. I asked for her to return it so that I can try and sell it or just give it back to the bank because I cannot make those payments. And with the tax return, I was unemployed for two months. I got $2,200 back and her income that I filed, she owed um, about $200. So I paid what she owed. And then I took the $2,000 that I got off my income and put it towards the bills that I had not paid for those two months. I didn't go on a spending spree and buy myself trinkets or whatever. I just, I, I paid the bills. Uh, what about the belongings uh, that Ms. Mills has at your house? They are in the shed and the shed is unlocked. She said she she said she had everything out of the house. And so it's all in the shed. She can get she or Robert can get them whenever. I do not care. Um, and with the toys, she's already taken like half of them to Robert's house. There's, I don't want to take all my children's toys out of their home. She was asking for certain toys. She gave my sister a list and I was looking through the toys and they're already gone. I couldn't even find them. And that was when I because just digging through all their toys, that's when I realized how many were already gone. And I was just said, I'm not comfortable getting getting rid of or giving up all their toys out of out of their home. I want my kids here. I want them to have some toys when they come over. All right. Um, as to the belongings that are in the shed, um, I'd like Robert to inform Mr. Mills when he can go over there to pick those up. And um, if Ms. Mills wants to go over also, um, then it should be a time when Mr. Mills is not present, but there needs to be notification about that. For now, I'm gonna accept Mr. Mills' representation that many of the toys are already um, with Ms. Mills, and so I'm not going to order anything specific on the toys. I took eight things, eight items for my kids. Eight. It sounds like you already provided a list of those to Mr. Mills, and I, I, he said he can't find them. Um, as to the Kia, um, before May 2nd, Mr. Mills, I, I'm going to need you to do a few things for me. I need you to fill out a financial declaration. Uh, you could get one from the clerk's office here that shows all of your income and all of your expenses. To my knowledge, I already filled one of those out. Okay. Uh, let me, let me make sure my case here, just a minute. <clears throat> That was, uh, okay. Uh, okay, good. I, I do see that. And I believe I don't even have the Kia on there and I'm still underwater. Okay. The next thing I need you to do then is 
I want you to provide three months of your um, wage stubs. Um, so do you get a, a a wage from an employer? I get yes. I work for Kiwit and I get paid every week. Um, but I haven't I haven't been there three months. I haven't even been there two months. Well, whatever whatever you can go back to, I want to see what your current earnings are. All right. Uh, so I can match that with your uh, financial declaration. The refund on the tax return. Um, well, well, let's do this. The, the next thing I need from you is um, if you paid debts with the tax return i need to know what those debts are I, um, I i i need you to submit that in writing to me which which is file it with the court send a copy to miss mills what i'm interested in is are these debts community debts or are they separate debts that were incurred after you separated so i need to know where that was spent uh, i will just say um the tax return is community property. And um, at some point, it's going to have to be accounted for in, in the financial um, disposition of this case. Um, but I, I, for the time being, I'd like to know what debts you paid with that, with that money. Your Honor, okay. I have no idea how to track that. It went into my bank account, and then I just paid bills. I don't know how to paper trail that. Well, you must, uh, whatever bills you paid after it went into your bank account, I need to know that. Um, for example, if you paid $100 in bills and yet you took in $2,200 in a tax return, then, then it's not going to look like you paid bills with it. If you paid up to $2,000, $3,000 in bills, then it's going to look like you did apply it. I. I need that information to evaluate this. I will do my best to pull statements. Okay. Can I add something? Um, just just one moment. And in, and so until I get that information, um, at this point, I'm not going to order Mr. Mills to pay the Kia insurance or the Kia payment. And um, uh, if his income shows that he does have the ability to do that, then I, uh, I may change my mind on that. But until I get that information, I'm, I'm not going to order that. We will address all that on May 2nd. Ms. Mills, go ahead. Um, back on the Kia, he had added, I can't recall what month I can't log into that bank account any longer. Um, but just months before we divorced, he added on, he, he refinanced the car and added a $5,000 credit card onto that vehicle loan. And I had told him, Hey, we're Rocky right now. This is not a good idea. And he didn't really consult me. He went ahead and did it anyway. So the balance was around 10,000 at that time. Now it's 15,000. I... I refinanced trying to get rid of debt and have a lower monthly payment was what I did. You must have paperwork on that refinance, Mr. Mills. When was it? The refinance we're talking about, you must have paperwork on it. I'm, I mean, probably at some point I did. I can get information from the bank. Do you know where you did the refinance? At Red Canoe. Okay, go to Red Canoe and they should have it. And I, I want you to file that with the court also. Yes, Your Honor. And I have another question or concern is he hasn't paid on the Kia, I think since January is what he said. So is it then at risk of being repossessed? What happens then? We're just going to wait until it gets repossessed? I, either that or uh, if you want to make a payment on it, you can. I'm not going to order Mr. Mills to do it until I see the financial issue a little more clearly. Um, 
So uh, if they're, I, I don't know, you, it may get repossessed or you could reach out to the lender and, and make some payment to keep that from happening. Um, I, and I'm going to address all of this on May 2nd after I get the financial information. So you may want to take some steps to make sure it doesn't get repossessed. Before I'm that. willing to meet with Robert to accept payment for the car if she wants it. Meaning if she wants to buy the car? If she wants to make the payments. Okay. Well, uh, that's going to be up to, to Ms. Mills. I'll let her decide that. I, I just need more information before I can decide if Mr. Mills is going to be responsible for that. Okay. Um, and what about child support? Um, Ms. Looney is here and she probably has wants to weigh in on the child support issue. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, yes, the state has just recently put in a notice of appearance as to child support. Um, the children are receiving state medical and TANF benefits currently. Um, so we would be asking that child support not be addressed at this time. Uh, at this point, what we've seen in the paperwork is that both parents are asking for full custody. So the state wouldn't have the ability to put in a child support order until that's been determined. And then we would be asking to be the ones to draft that order and present it to the court. Okay. All right. And uh, we're not going to make a determination of custody until I hear back from Ms. Day um, after her investigation. Okay. All right. Uh, if we could get the documents then into the court, we'll be back here on May 2nd. We'll make some additional decisions. Okay. And Your, Your Honor, Honor, if the state can just um, ask Mr. Mills that he serves us with that paperwork as well. That now that we've filed our notice of appearance, he should be getting that soon if he does not already have it, which would have our address for service. So the Department of Child Support is asking that whatever you file with the court and send to Ms. Mills, you also send to the Department of Child Support. Okay. Um, one sec. And what I'm sorry, please remind me what you wanted me to submit so that I can write it all down. Okay, you ready? Yes. I need your recent wage statements from Kiwit. Okay. I need the refinance papers for the car. Um, you've already filed a uh, financial declaration, so uh, we don't need to redo that. And I need documentation on what bills were paid with the tax return. All right. Okay. All right, thank you everyone. I'll be entering an anti-harassment order in the um, um, anti-harassment case and that will be available to pick up probably by Friday if you wanna get a copy of it. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. We'll see you back here in a month then, okay? Thank Take you. Care. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, the last matter is Mills versus Mills. <clears throat> Uh, my clerk is speaking to me a minute, just a moment. Uh, all right, um, I think I need to address uh, one issue, um, which is Mr. Mills has filed a notice of disqualification against me um, after the last hearing. And um, that doesn't exclude me at this point for two reasons. Um, one is, um, a, a notice of disqualification needs to be filed before a judicial officer makes a discretionary decision. And I did make discretionary decisions on March 22nd and the morning of March 29th, the disqualification was filed at 4.30 on March 29th. Secondly, I'm a court commissioner and um, the 
notice of disqualification doesn't apply to commissioners. What um, Mr. Mills can do um, at any point, uh, although you have to do it within 10 days of a decision, is you can ask one of the judges um, or make a motion for a revision, uh, again, within 10 days of a decision. And um, then um, one of the judges can review what I've done and determine if I made the right decision. So those, those are the options that are available for right now. Um, I'm going to remain uh, involved in this case. Um, we're here today for a review um, by the uh, guardian ad litem. I think it's a preliminary review. Uh, let me hear from Ms. Day, and then I'll go to Ms. Mills, and then Mr. Mills um, for any comments. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Yes. Um, I have... I have had an opportunity to meet with both the parents and do their home visits. I've talked with Ms. Mills' new partner, and I've also talked with the visit supervisor. And so I think things are going along fairly well. Um, in the previous hearing, you had addressed the fees for Ms. Mills, which will be county paid. Mr. Mills has made payment arrangements with me. And so I think that is moving along as appropriately as it, as it could. My recommendation at this time would be to um, go ahead and move forward with visitation unsupervised um, under the same overnight, one overnight on the weekend as it currently is, but it does not need to be supervised. The visits are going well. There's no um, outward concerns that I can find. There are lots of allegations in this case, but nothing that I'm able to substantiate that is anything more significant than what we typically see when parties end a long relationship and children are involved. There's no harm to these children. The father's engaged. He's been actively involved. I've been to his home. The home is safe and appropriate. And the visit supervisor expressed no concerns about father having overnights unsupervised. So that would be my request at this point in time. And then I will continue to move forward and hopefully complete my report within the next probably 40 to 60 days at the most. Great. Ms. Mills, any comment? Um, well, I had a few notes um, for today. Um, the unsupervised is very concerning to me still, um, even just from, I mean, seven years I've been with this man. Um, I had spoken to Angela, the supervisor, and she said that Sam is so angry. Um, she no longer wants to be the supervisor. Um, and I was going to bring that up at the next hearing, but I figured, um, today wouldn't hurt to bring it up. Um, she said she has no relationship with him, no conversations outside of the visitation. And I don't really feel like they were really being supervised at her house. She has quite a big property. Um, and I believe most of the time was spent at the back end of the property or away from Angela really supervising aside from mealtimes. Um, so that's my concern. All right, thank you. Um, I, I yeah, also overnight visits right now are are Friday night to Saturday, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I also would love to see him in anger management. Um, I had spoken to Tina Day about DV counseling, which I think is so important for Samuel moving forward and you know, future relationships that will involve my children um, and a parenting class. I, I think those things are all very necessary for him. All right, Ms. Mr. Mills, any uh, response? Yeah, um, I have no idea what she's talking about. I, I do believe that she isn't after the best interest of the children. Her intent is to make my life as hard as possible. I'm a I'm not an angry person. We had a bad relationship. She pushed my buttons. I pushed hers. And it was not a good relationship. But I, I don't know what she's talking about with anger and my sister. I'm never angry towards my sister. I'm always very friendly and civil with my sister. I do have a relationship with my sister. I have no idea where she's getting this from. And Rebecca's goal in all this is just to make sure that she can take as much from me as possible, including my children. Like she's walked away, taken my kids and is planning. She's hoping 
to leave me with all the debt. She wants me to pay for the car, pay for the insurance, pay for child support. She moved in with her new boyfriend and she doesn't work. There's no reason she can't work. She filed for welfare. And then I have the welfare office coming after me for child support when we had said, when we had decided to hold off until custody was determined. She is just doing everything in her power to make sure that I'm miserable, regardless of how it affects the children. My supervised visits with the kids and even the phone calls, my kids ask me when they can come home. My last, on not even my last, every time I'm with my kids, my three-year-old never leaves my side. And he constantly says, I love you. I love you. And he'll sit out. He was sitting on my lap for 30 minutes and just kept saying, you're my daddy. You're my daddy. They love me. They're, they are of no harm. This, I don't know why she's doing this. Her, and let, I mean, it just seems like her only goal in this is vengeance and just destroying my life, regardless of how it affects our children. All right. And as Tina Day discussed with me is she would attempt to get Rebecca to sign an agreement where I could pick my kids up Friday evening and keep them through Sunday and then have one night a week during the week to have my kids in the evening, which I want my kids full time, but that's worlds better than these supervised visits. And I want an equal opportunity to prove myself that I can raise my children. And I feel like I've been denied that. I, I have filed my response. I refiled my response to her harassment report showing her behaviors towards me. Me and her had agreed to be civil. And then once she finally got moved into her new boyfriends, that's when that she went from being civil with me which she wasn't even being civil with me. She was messaging me almost daily, telling me every time they had sex, describing it. When she would come over to the house, she would tell me the sexual acts they were doing. And she had sent me pictures of her naked in his bed saying, oh, we just had sex and we're having sex again tonight when he comes home. It's, I have filed this evidence. Okay, She's, thank you. I've looked at uh, this case um, a bit before the hearing today. Um, I made some decisions uh, early on for supervised visits until I could get some feedback from the guardian ad litem. Um, I, and that was based on what uh, were concerning texts from Mr. Mills to Ms. Mills. Um, but even uh, prior to hearing from the guardian ad litem today, it, uh, it, it was clear to me that while Mr. Mills and Ms. Mills um, were uh, having certain difficulties in their relationship, um, it does not appear that that um, spills over into either of their relationships with uh, the two boys. Um, and that's confirmed today now by the guardian ad litem saying that um, it would be appropriate to go to unsupervised visits. Um, the schedule that Mr. Mills indicated may be one that uh, works um, down the road uh, in the near future but for right now, um, I would like to uh, have unsupervised visits. So that would be from Friday the 14th to Saturday the 15th, I believe at six o'clock when, when it ends. And then Friday the 21st to Saturday the 22nd, Friday the 28th to Saturday the 29th. And then we will get together again on May 3rd to address a number of financial and other issues. And one of those issues will be how are those unsupervised visits going? 
And should it go from Friday to Sunday and should there be a midweek visit? Um, and everybody can weigh in on that. But for right now, I'm going to order that the current visitation that was supervised just uh, now can be unsupervised and can be at um, Mr. Mills' house. Ken. Your Honor, can I make a comment? Yes, please. Um, the only reason it was Friday and Saturday was because of my sister's church schedule. Saturday and Sunday would be more ideal for me. Okay. Um, Ms. Mills, any comment on moving it to Saturday to Sunday? Um, no, I, I do think that it will be kind of a shock to go from every other weekend now to every single weekend. I think I'd rather do that, though. I think Mr. Mills has spent some time away from his sons and I, I think for the next three weeks anyway I, I'd like to see that we um, it will be adjusted I suspect I'm going to make some adjustments on May 3rd but for the next three weeks I'd like to see um, every weekend so if Saturday at what was the well the beginning time should be um, let's say 10 o'clock to Sunday at six, that will then be Saturday, Sunday for the next three weeks. Um, and I, your honor. Your honor. I, long-term, I don't intend to take the children away from you every weekend, Ms. Mills. I, I don't think that's appropriate, but uh, I do want um, Mr. Mills to see them this can month. I, Go ahead. Can I add? I are, are we just not going to address anger management, DV counseling? I mean, testing for the that, you have seen that will be addressed by Ms. Day. I've provided my evidence. That's her report. I'm, I'm so so concerned. I I don't feel good about this in the least. I understand that, but again, Ms. Day is saying he's left needles on the concerned. floor. Your Honor. And the bathroom that my children use. What I see is that you and Mr. Mills have had a, a difficult relationship, but I don't think that spills over into either of your relationships with your sons. So, and I will address will those be, things in my uh, report, the next, Your Honor. Absolutely. The next three weeks, uh, Saturday to Sunday, will be unsupervised with Mr. Mills. Okay. All right. Your Honor. I, I just have some things I, I need to bring up, if I may. Okay, go ahead. Um, I'm, I don't like going through her new boyfriend to talk to my children. I don't think that is right. It's, he's not their father. I'm their father. And I should, I'm okay with a parenting app. I just don't want to go through her boyfriend. And I would agree, Your Honor, it's more appropriate for them to use like something like our family wizard or some other type of a parenting app um, when they need to communicate about the children. They should not be really communicating about the other things and the obviously the harassing or, or inappropriate texting should not be occurring, but it, it shouldn't be required for him to discuss decisions about the children with mother's newest boyfriend. Everything is run by me. He's not responding to these on his own. I'm telling him what to say, and he's reading the text to me. Um, I would prefer no contact between the two of us, even on a nap. I'm going to uh, leave. Um, Robert in place as the person to communicate through until we get to uh, May 3rd, which is our next uh, date together. And then um, I'll address that in, uh, well, well, we'll look at how things are going at that point, okay? I have one, just one last thing, Your Honor, that is affecting my current life. Okay, go ahead. Um, she still has my Kia, which her boyfriend just bought a new car for her and the bank restricted my account on Monday because of the delinquent payments. And 
I it's I need her to make those payments or give the car back. Ms. Mills, any response? Um, he's my boyfriend. He bought he bought a vehicle. That's not my vehicle. Um, well, it seems to me we have to have one or the other. If you want to keep the Kia, you've got to make she, the payments. It's sitting in her lot and she drives the new car. I thought that we were waiting to for financials to hear back on the Kia was my understanding. Say that one more time. I'm sorry. At the last hearing, I was told that we were waiting on financial information from Samuel Mills um, to make a decision on on the Kia. I have filed those, Your Honor. He has always paid for it. I think that he should provide a vehicle for his children. He always has. The, the point of this is it's not being used. She has a new vehicle provided to her. And it is affecting my ability to, to live. My, I couldn't access my debit card and I had to call the bank and get that restriction lifted. But that's only a temporary lift. I cannot afford that car. If she would like to hang on to that car, I need her to pay for it. And I, my recollection is we were going to handle this on May 3rd when we got together and dealt with all of the financial issues. So um, I think I'm going to have to put this over to then. Thank you for bringing it up now. Um, but I'm going to have to make the decision on it on May 3rd. And, and it will be one of the issues we, we determine. All right. Anything else? Doesn't sound like it. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Everyone, and we'll see you back here in about three weeks. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> So let's go to Samuel Mills and Rebecca Mills. Let me get my notes here. All right, in the Mills matter, I want to check in on the um, visits that I ordered, and then we have to make a decision about the vehicle. Um, and Mr. Mills has filed a declaration requesting full custody. Um, I think I want to go to Ms. Day first, um, and then um, we'll go from there. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have had contact with both parents and I've been able to observe um, dad's visits in part, obviously not the whole visit. Um, and I haven't found any concerns. I don't have any concerns about his visitation with the boys. Um, the home is clean and appropriate. The children are bonded to him. They seek him out. He meets their needs. Um, and I don't have any concerns about that. I think the visitation should continue. Um, I wouldn't have any objection to that being um, Friday to Sunday, provided dad is not working. Um, if dad is working, I think it should remain Saturday to Sunday. I know there's been some um, discussion between the parents about that when dad had to work for a little bit on Saturday and he asked the children to be dropped early to be dropped off at their regular time with his sister. And I don't have any objection to that. That's perfectly fine. The children know this, know the aunt. And I think that's appropriate. Um, I was able yesterday, I received the um, CPS reports that I've been waiting on. Um, those do indicate um, uh, a very past history of domestic violence. So I think it's appropriate for an anger evaluation to occur um, within the next 60 to 90 days um, for father, just so that I have that information and if there's anything that needs to be done. Um, it is old history, but those do line up with some of the allegations that mother has made. Um, the difference being um, that it was more than, it was like almost five years ago, four years ago. So it's not a recent history, but I think that alleviates kind of that accusation and kind of addresses that. Do you have any questions, Your Honor? Uh, not right now. I probably will uh, in a moment. Mr. Mills, let me hear from you next. Um, well, I mean, 
Uh, you read my declaration. I don't believe Rebecca is very emotionally stable. She makes very rash decisions and is impulsive. Um, she has defamed me. She has lied. She has embellished on her um, declarations. There, she's doing everything she can to make this case something it's not. Um, this is just a divorce where two parents didn't get along. We have had our problems and it is time for us to move on, but she shouldn't be using the children as a weapon to hurt me. I mean, she, she met a new boyfriend and within two weeks was trying to take them, the kids and all their presents to his house on Christmas Eve to have Christmas Eve there and Christmas morning. That's like, that's not appropriate. She just met this guy online and within not even two weeks was trying to do that. She's trying everything she can to remove me from their lives and have this new life with her new boyfriend as the new dad. She's had those multiple uh, motions for reconsideration when the children are in no harm's way. She's gotten the kids on state health insurance when I have excellent health care, but she has failed to provide me with the birth certificates that she took. She claims to have lost them every time I have asked, but they got to be somewhere. She was able to apply for welfare. She was able to get them on health or on the state health insurance. And the photos that she submitted saying that I beat her were me defending myself. They're small bruises of me grabbing her to stop her from hitting me, and she's held on to them for years to use as blackmail. And she's doing everything she said she would. Every time I've brought up before in the past that I wanted a divorce, this she's this is basically what she said she would do. She said she would. She has all this evidence of that saying, "Who are they going to believe, big you or little me?" There's no marks on me. You have no photos of marks on you. And <clears throat> this is just not what she's making it out to be. I do work for a living. That does complicate things with the children. However, I do have adequate childcare with my family. The kids will never be watched by anyone that isn't their family. And I do work for a living. Rebecca is entitled. She's going, she's applied for welfare when her new boyfriend pays for everything she has. She is a licensed cosmetologist. She can work. She's able to work. But she's just trying to manipulate the state and manipulate this divorce hearing and just to get her way. All right. Thank you. Ms. Mills. Hi. Is it my turn to talk? Yes. Um, I think that Sam uses a lot of not very kind descriptive language, like manipulative, liar, um, uh, oh, which is harmful. Um, I, I don't know what exactly I have manipulated or lied about. Um, I do know that in Samuel's very first filing, um, when he asked for full custody, that is the first time I have ever heard him speak any negativity towards me as a mother. Um, it's the only time he has ever spoken about full custody. And the only reason that he filed that temporary order in the first place was because I found evidence of drug use in his home where my children could easily, I mean, there was a morphine 30 milligram pill in a plastic baggie my children could have easily grabbed that. He has SARMs, if you know what that is. It's basically like legal, not for human consumption, steroids, estrogen blockers, things like that on his nightstand where my children can just untwist the cap and take it. Those are not locked in a safe place. Um, that is a huge concern. The only reason he asked for full custody was I believe that that was a vindictive attack on me. Um, he's never expressed a want for full custody or even 50, 50 previously. Yeah. We have had a tumultuous relationship and every time Samuel left, he would leave once a month, which I'm sorry, that is unstable for, for the children. Um, that's a pattern of his leaving once every month for nights, days, blocking me, um, providing no financial support. 
totally neglecting the children and leaving them in my care. Um, and he would say, oh, I just want them on my days off and I'll get it. I just want them on my days off. So I think that him asking for full custody is not being truthful. Um, I think that during his visits, his mother has been there. I mean, almost for the entirety of the visits, my kids come home and they share it. Um, and I know from experience that when grandma's there, it's, it's an experience. She makes them breakfast. She entertains them. She takes care of them and which is great from a child's perspective, but his mother was abusive to Samuel as a child and neglectful. Um, which is very concerning that now she is almost taking the lead in his parenting time. Um, and also that he wants, he's asking for full custody. And then in his latest declaration, he's backpedaling and saying, um, I am asking for custody or at least equal time. So he's already backpedaling. He doesn't want full custody. He's never wanted full custody. This is an attack on me through the children. Um, he can't even handle the two days a week right now without his mom being there or relying on a babysitter. May I respond to that, Your Honor? I'm losing time with my children. To That's why Miss Mills finished. Go ahead. I'm losing time with my kids so that they can be with a babysitter. If it's family or not, I'm losing time. He's not missing any time with them. I'm the one losing time. Mr. Mills, briefly, and then I want to go back to Ms. Dane. Um, to address the at least half time, that's just because I understand that in these circumstances, the father getting full custody is very rare, and I just want as much time with my children as possible. And referencing my mother coming over, my mother comes over for a few hours because she misses the kids. She's not taking the lead. I'm not sitting back and doing nothing. We're engaging with the kids. She comes over to see them because she hasn't seen them very much these past few months. Ms. Day, have you observed uh, Mr. Mill's mother being present when you were um, at his house? So when I, when I did the drop-in visit, um, it was a drop-in visit. It was unannounced. Um, Mr. Mill's new girlfriend was there and I thought it was her mother, but maybe it was his mother. Um, they were her, there, but the her, children were not engaging with them. The children were engaging with dad. They were playing with him. He was reading to them. They were in the kitchen doing their own thing. So I did not observe that somebody else was taking the lead in this. I would point out to the court that both of these parents have moved on relatively quickly to new partners and introduced these very young children to new partners, new living circumstances, um, all the way around. That is where I see the instability. I don't see the instability in any other situation that they are not both equally culpable in. And, and I've been very frank with both parties about that. Children are um, very impacted by these sudden changes and then this, um, these new partners that are, that are involved. Both of these parents have some, some pretty emotional, strong emotional feelings right now, and I understand that. But there's, there's nothing that I've found so far that would tell me that either parent is not able to parent their children during their time. I think father should have residential time. I think mom should have residential time. I don't think there's any reason that the paternal family cannot provide care if father has to work during a small portion of that time just for continuity. Um, I don't see any concerns with that. I, I don't find that. I also don't find any anything that would concern me to the level of drug use and drug abuse going on in father's home. I've been walked through his home um, on a couple of occasions now. I've not seen anything present in his life, in his person, or in the home that would give me that concern. Do you work uh, Friday nights, uh, Mr. Mills? I work Friday during the day. So my work schedule is Monday through Friday. And then I occasionally have a Saturday shift, which tends to be a shorter shift, but it's because I work construction. Um, and it's just, if there's work to be done so that those Saturdays aren't guaranteed. What time do you typically get home on Friday? Um, around 5.30. Okay. I think I said this before. I, I, I think you're both good parents and um, the concern is, is you don't get along with each other, but um, I've 
read, you both have written things that impugn your ability to be a parent. Uh, that is completely disputed by Ms. Day, who says uh, both of you are fine. And that's what I'm going to accept. I, I think you both love your kids. Uh, you just have uh, the issue with each other. Um, we may get to an equal um, time with, with the children, uh, but I, I think we're a couple steps away from that at this point. I'm going to expand the visitation from Friday at 6 or 6.30, whenever you can pick up the children, until Sunday. And I don't know when we ended it on Sunday, but whatever the end time is. Six, Your Honor. All right, to six on Sunday. So I'm going to expand it uh, to that. Um, and I think I'm going to leave that for a couple months and then we'll look at it and then we're going to have to make some adjustments. I don't think it's appropriate permanently that the father get all the weekends and the mother get no weekends. I think, I think uh, that needs to be shared. Um, but right now I, I want to make sure that the children are spending time with their father. So I am going to order every Friday through um, Sunday. And I hope to have my report done within 30 to 40 days at the most. So once that's prepared, then I think it would be appropriate to see where things are at. Two months from now would be, let's say the end of June. So that would be June 28th. That's when we should be back. All right, the other issue I think is we were gonna address, I think it was a Kia automobile that Ms. Mills wanted to use um, and she wanted Mr. Mills to pay for. And um, uh, if uh, I'll start with Ms. Mills, if you wanna address that issue and then I'll have Mr. Mills address it. If you could do it fairly quickly, I'm running over on this docket already. So go ahead. Um, I'm sorry, I, can we backpedal just briefly? Um, I am so concerned as to why we have completely skipped over Sam's use of illegal substances. He's been arrested for that and didn't learn his lesson at all. Why are we not looking into that at all? Ms. Day has been to the house. She's observed Mr. Mills. She has not brought any concerns to the court's attention. So it has not been ignored but it does not appear to be an issue right now. And we can't do a drug test just for the safety of my kids and peace of mind. If he does not have a drug issue, then it should come back clean, right? And then we can, I'll feel better about my kids. We can move past that. Let me ask Ms. Day, any, any response to that? I don't have any objection um, it, to father providing a hair follicle test that would verify that he's been clean, remain clean and sober for the last 90 days or clean. I'm, there's not an issue with alcohol that I'm aware of, but I just haven't seen anything that would lead me to that. Generally, those kinds of that kind of information isn't just taken off of one person's report. I realize that he has a prior conviction that's quite some time ago. I don't see any evidence of drug use currently, and I would obviously continue investigating that and bring that to the court's attention if I had any concerns between now and the time that we finish this case. So I have no objection, yeah, but I don't have it. a reason for requesting. I'll handle it this way. Um, I'll have Mr. Mills do a hair follicle test. If it comes back positive, well, he'll have to initially pay for it. If it comes back positive, he will pay for it. If it comes back negative, Ms. Mills will pay for it. And if she's not able to pay for it, then it will be a credit towards any kind of payment Mr. Mills makes. Also, Ms. Day uh, indicated she wanted to have an anger management evaluation in the next 60 to 90 days. Um, and I, I'm sorry, I skipped over that. I think that um, does make sense um, given, um, I guess, the remote history. So I will order that also. Um and I have a question. We had talked about um, domestic violence counseling where I would go in and, and talk about my experiences 
And then they would counsel him according to that, which I think is, I think it's so important to do that for him and his future relationships. Um, and the fact that he has moved on, I know I have too, but the fact that there is a woman, another woman in a relationship around my children, I think that DV counseling, even over anger management. I'm going to go with the anger management uh, evaluation and we'll see where that goes. Okay. Do you want to adjust the Kia? Um, yeah, I have driven that vehicle since we got it, I believe in 2019. Um, Samuel has always paid for it. And he has always said, you know, like I said, we've had a tumultuous relationship. And every time we've thought, oh, we're going to divorce. He has always said, oh, you'll always have a vehicle. You'll always, you'll always have, a, I'll make sure you always have a car until I moved on with someone else. And then it was give me my car back. I need the car back. I'm not paying for it. Um, which I think is just vindictive. Um, I, I do have children that need to be driven around and he has always paid for it. And I think he should continue to, he took the insurance off of it. He says that he didn't, but his car is insured still. So mine was removed from insurance. I've had to pay for a flat tire. I've had to pay for, um, the registration on the car. And currently it has a dead battery, um, that I haven't addressed because I, I haven't known who it would go to and I can't afford to keep paying on this car if I don't know if I'm going to be keeping it. Mr. Mills. So her boyfriend just bought her a new car. Every single time we've done the pickups, she's not driving that car. She's driving the new car that was bought for her. The reason there's no insurance on it is because the insurance lapsed because I couldn't pay for it. And I can't even pay, like I can't pay for it now. Can't for the, pay for that insurance. I can't pay for the car now. Financially, things used to be different. I used to bring home more money. I don't bring home as much now. And also, <clears throat> she all I was able to pay for that because she paid other bills. And so she's saying, I always paid for the car, so I have to pay for it. Well, she always paid for my other bills. Is she going to keep paying for those? All right, I'm going to um, allow the Kia to go to Ms. Mills, um, but she will be responsible for the payment on it. So both the car payment and insurance and whatever maintenance. It uh, is behind two months right now, Your Honor. So I need two payments for it. Say that one more time. I'm sorry. There are two payments due for that car. Okay. And I have a question. I can't afford car payments. If I did, I would go out and get car payments. Um, so I know that in the past, Samuel has talked about just turning it back into the bank. He tacked on a $5,000 loan onto that car loan. So if he's not going to be the one paying for it, then I I don't want it. All right. Well, that's, that's a choice. Uh, if you want it, then you'll need to be... Your Honor, if you, if you, you don't want to want it, if I'm going to pay, then for you it. can leave the Kia with Mr. Mills. <laughs> okay. Can I have a couple of days to get that back to him, or how does that work? Um. Yeah, you have it now. Um, let's get it back to him by Sunday. Okay. Okay. And I also want to state that my boyfriend bought himself a new car. He didn't buy me a car. <laughs> okay. All right. I think those are the issues for today. Uh, Your Honor, I yep. just have a couple things I want to bring up now to be addressed at a different hearing. If I may. Um, Go ahead. We have accumulated $5,000 in credit card debt. I'd like for her to pay her half of that. Okay, just a minute. Before we go into all of that, um, well, if if we want to handle more property issues on a temporary basis, I'm going to have to set another hearing. I can't address those today okay. because I, I haven't read anything about it. I I was here to adjust uh, visitation and the car. Uh, right. that's, that's what's before us today. Do you want me to set a hearing in a couple of weeks to address other issues? Please, but I have one that's really simple. Um, 
I just need her to remove herself from the PUD. She is the primary person for the PUD. And when I asked her to do it, she said it's not her problem for me to deal with it. So I am not the primary on my own electric bill. And she refused to give me any of the login information. I was eventually able to get new login information, but she's still the primary and can go in and change it anytime. All right, all of those issues I'm gonna have to put over um, and I'm gonna do three weeks. And Mr. Mills, I want you to file a declaration listing all of those additional issues and what you'd like to see happen. You need to do that in like a week and a half. Give it to Ms. Mills so she has a chance to respond. All right, uh, and we'll come back here on May 31. And we'll to that. address finances only. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Thank you both. Thank you. Um, All right. That brings us to um, Mills and Mills. And um, I wanted. Mr. Mills, I think, has a number of property financial issues he wants to discuss, but we're going to handle that on May 31. So um, it seemed to me the only thing in front of me today was um, a motion to waive the GAL fee. Um, and I think I've already done that for Ms. Mills. So Mr. Mills, uh, is a, that's a motion you brought, is that right? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, did we discuss what your income is uh, in the uh, And if not, can you let me know what it is? I have filed a financial declaration previously that showed my income. Okay. Um, let me... I can give you a verbal on my hourly if you'd like. Give me just a moment here. All right, I've got uh, you indicated monthly income of twenty four seventy two. Is that? Still about right? Uh, yes, Your Honor. And uh, and expenses of 2830. That's your net income. So your your gross income, uh, it looks like higher. It looks like 3532. Uh, and are you working full time now, or is it yes. seasonal? Yes. Or tell me it, about it's it's full time, Your Honor. Um, it's construction. I'm in an apprenticeship. Okay. And the during the time of the year, the work slows down. So it's summer. So I do have more consistent work right now. And also, when the job is done, I will be unemployed until there's another job that my union can put me on. Okay. Ms. Mills, do you have any comment on, on his motion to waive the GAL fee? No. Okay. All right, um, I'm gonna go ahead and grant that motion. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Um, I don't think anything else was before us today, but I'll, I'll let the parties correct me if I'm wrong. Ms. Mills, do you think there are any other decisions today? Again, the property issues we're going to handle in two weeks. Um, I saw on the, it was on the Odyssey that it was Tina Day's final review. So I guess I'm wondering when that is going to take place. Not with us right now. It probably was a date that I had put in the order 
And um, um, if she was here, I guess we could talk to her. I'm not sure why she's not here, um, but um, I, I think she's still working with both of you and um, that will come up. Okay. Um, hopefully she'll be here on the 31st and we can find out where she's at. Okay. okay. Um, I do have one concern. Okay. I have a few, but I think I'll just stick to the, the one today. Um, I, we have a mutual friend and, um, he has told this friend that, uh, it's concerning the protection order, that this is a temporary order and it just hasn't ended yet. And he's also mentioned to our third party that, um, there's no distance in our, in the protection order. So, um, I guess I just want to make sure that he maybe goes and picks up a copy of this and understands that this is an order. It is not a temporary order and to make sure that he's following it properly. Okay. Um, I will encourage Mr. Mills to do that. Um, I was also wanting to ask if we could enforce the right of first refusal. Um, it's my understanding that my kids in Sam's time have been spending a lot of time with, with babysitters. Um, I think that they are missing their parents, not, not babysitters. Um, Sam is missing his time due to work or activities, and I'm missing my time with my kids due to Sam not allowing me to raise my kids and have, and have that time with my kids. Um, Tina Day has said that, you know, there's no dangers at my home. Um, I'm a stay-at-home mother. I don't see any need for our kids to be with a babysitter really at any given time unless one of us isn't available. All right, before we respond to that, I think um, Mr. Mills should have a chance to um, consider that. I'm willing to put that proposal on on the 31st also. Um, and address that. I, I don't know that I want anybody um, just having to shoot from the hip on responding to it. Okay. Um, all right. May I, may uh, I, uh, again, if you're going to talk about first right of refusal, we'll take that up in more detail on the on the 31st. But go ahead, Mr. Mills. Um, well, in response to that, so the only time I have someone else watch them, and I don't do other activities, the only the only thing that comes in the way is work, and because it is um, summertime, I frequently have a Saturday shift that is typically shorter than my normal my normal shifts, and our current plan is I pick them up Friday evenings and keep them through Sunday. So the only time that they are not in my care is in the morning to the very early afternoon when my mother, she stays the night, Friday night, and I wake up early, I go to work, and then I come home, and then it's just me until drop off on Sunday. So they're not, they're not spend, spending a majority of time with anybody but me, and it's just right now because of the time of year, I need on Saturday that babysitter for a few hours. And sir, so again, I'm not making a decision on that today. I am. Uh, we're going to do that on the 31st. So um, I'll need to discuss that further with you on that time. Oh, yeah. I am so sorry. I have one more thing. Um, we had talked about a hair follicle test. And I was wondering if we could put a timeline on that, a date that he needs that submitted, because he admitted to using, I mean, illegal prescription drugs that were not prescribed to him in court, I believe it was March 1st. Um, and so many days have already gone by that, you know, 90 days, his test might come back negative. I would, I'd really like a timeline soon on that if we could. Can you have that done by May 31, Mr. Mills? Um, I'm just, I would, that's not a problem. <coughs> Excuse me, um, that's not a problem. I just, I need direction on what is acceptable, when and where. Um, and that's what I've been waiting on this whole time. Well, a, kind of a typical is, is to have you do a 12 panel hair follicle test. Um, Columbia Wellness will do it. Um, uh, and that's where I would, would check. 
Okay, and if they make me pay up front, you said that if it comes back negative, Rebecca will be responsible for that. So right. Okay, fantastic. Right. Thank you. Um, I had a couple things I was hoping to bring up. If there's nothing else to go over right now. Okay, I'm somewhat late on my other uh, docket, so go ahead and and it may be something I'll say let's take up on the 31st and I'll, I'll try to call your case earlier so we have more time on the okay. 31st. Go ahead. Um, well, we've been doing pickup drop-off in person. Rebecca has approached me and spoken with me. Um, the Sunday before last, she approached me and said that she wanted to work together to do what's best for the kids, which is completely different than her attitude that she brings to court, which as I've stated before, she's putting an act on to make this court or this case something it's not. And I even, my last pickup on Friday, she allowed me to pick them up early from her house. And I did bring them back early on Mother's Day. So we kind of had that um, agreement with each other that I could pick them up early on Friday and I would bring them back in the morning so she could have Mother's Day with the children. And there has not been any issues with us meeting in person. So I just don't understand how that works with the anti-harassment order because in court, she's saying she wants to do it by the books, but I mean, we haven't been, and she hasn't, she's been fine meeting me in person. Okay, well, her, I think her cooperation doesn't really remove the order. Uh, right. And I, no, I order is anti-harassment. To... It's so that you can't say personal things about me that's what the order is and it's also maintaining a distance from me aside from pick up or drop off with our children right that's the only exception okay. Okay. um and then i know we're crunched for time if i may just throw in a couple okay. things i'm sure they'll be addressed at a later date um i do not like having to go through her boyfriend the man she's trying to replace me as the father of our child just to get information on my kids I I am perfectly okay doing a parenting app or just messaging her directly I believe the reason she doesn't want to do that is because she doesn't trust herself to say something that wouldn't complicate her situation in this court hearing um and I just I think it's it's insulting that I have to speak to him to find information out about my children when we could go through a parenting app and discuss it with each other. I, I did want to move away from uh, that line of communication. Let's take that up on the 31st also. Okay. Can I just interject there and say that I offered multiple times to do a parenting app? We also went through his sister, Angela, who said she no longer wanted to do it. She didn't want to be in between us. And then we went to another third party. So I, uh, the care. Let's take it up on the 31st, please. Okay. okay. Anything else, Mr. Mills? Uh, yes. Uh, further finances to be discussed on the 31st. Um, the bank is charging me nearly $500 a month that the Kia was not insured while it was in her custody. And I want to submit when that is all squared away. I haven't gotten the exact number but I would like to submit that and hope hope that she would pay what the bank has added to that car. All right, you can submit the whatever paperwork supports that uh, and try to get it in by the 31st. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. All right, um, thank you both. And on the 31st, again, I will um, call your case near the beginning so we have plenty of time to go over all these issues. Thank okay. You. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Two weeks, take care. All right, next is uh, Samuel Mills and Rebecca Mills. I, I see Rebecca Mills is here. Um, I actually was um, a little surprised to see this on the docket because I think we're going to take up a lot of issues next week. Um, was there an um, issue in particular that you wanted to address today, Ms. Mills? Um, I had one, one quick one, but I, I, I don't see Samuel here and I feel like he would probably need to be here. Okay. Um, I was hoping 
I know that we had ordered a hair follicle test and I was hoping that if he hadn't taken it yet, we could switch the 12 panel to a 17 panel because that is that will test for what he admitted to actually taking. The other one won't test for that. All right. We made a note about that. I'm, I'll, uh, we'll take that up next week. Um, again, I, I appreciate you being here and, and I'm certain I put this on the docket for today, but I've been um, putting all of the issues off for next week and I, I hope to address many of those at that time, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, we'll see you then. Bye. All right, um, we're gonna have to bounce around a little bit. Mr. Mills, can you hear us now? You wanna... Yes, Your Honor. All right, good, so we can go forward then. We have um, Ms. A and, um, and Rebecca Mills here. Yeah. All right, today uh, we were gonna handle a number of property issues. I don't know if you have a pen and paper, but I went through the file and I was gonna list all of the issues that um, we put over for today. So let me go through. I, go ahead. I don't have a pen. I don't have a pen and paper right now. All right. Well, let me list them and then I'll go through them one by one. Okay. Your Honor, if I could interrupt, am I going to be needed for this hearing if it's only property? Well, um, do you have any um, update on the um, visitation with Mr. Uh, Mills? The only update I have is I've provided a copy of the hair follicle that Mr. Mills completed, which was clean. Um, and so that's probably one of the things you guys will be addressing. I have not been able to do another drop in, but I hope to get that done and be able to wrap up the report as discussed last week. So outside of that, that's the only update I have. Um, Ms. Mills has um, indicated to me that she'd like to have a a 17 panel hair follicle test done. Is there any benefit to that over the one that was done? By Mr. So her request is um, to see if there are any uh, steroids or those types of substances. I don't have any objection to that, Mr. Mills might, but I would say that it would need to be paid for by Ms. Mills. The previous 12 panel was clean. It was provided timely. I don't have any indication in the information I've seen from Mr. Mills um, other than Mrs. Mills' allegations of, of illegal uh, substance abuse that would involve other substances besides narcotics. Okay. So I know there is a history of that. Mr. Mills has admitted that, uh, but I haven't seen anything that would say there was recent use at this point. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, uh, I, th I think that's uh, all we'll need from you uh, on this matter, okay? Thank you, Your Honor. All right, let me go through the list that I wrote down. Um, uh, Ms. Mills is requesting a 17 panel hair follicle test. Um, there's the issue of the insurance for the Kia Soul. Mr. Mills is requesting that Ms. Mills pay $1,128 for the insurance. Mr. Mills is asking that Ms. Mills pay $430 for the hair follicle test that he just took. There's a child support issue um, that is going to be dealt with by the state. There's the issue of communication between the parties. Uh, it's now going through Robert, and the request is that we uh, move away from that communication. Uh, there's a question of where the money from the tax return went. There's a question of whether the car was refinanced. There's a question of um, adding $5,000 to the credit card. There's an issue of the car payment of, of $389.38 for the Kia Soul. There's a request uh, that Mr. Mills take anger management and parenting classes. There's a request that uh, Mr. Mills do a domestic violence evaluation within 60 days. 
there's a request by Mr. Mills that Ms. Mills remove her name as the primary on the PUD account to the house. So those, those are the issues. I'm gonna to try to go through those as um, efficiently as we can. So let's go to the first one, the 17 panel hair follicle test. Ms. Mills, do you wanna address that? Ms. Mills. Ms. Mills, can you hear me at this point? I cannot hear you. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, about the 12 panel drug test, I guess I'm just very disappointed that a drug test was recommended that didn't even test for the drugs that were concerning to me that I have proof that he's using. And I think it was yesterday, I submitted recent photos from just, I think it was June. It was June or July of just this last year of Sam still using steroids. Um, I, in my heart, I mean, I've been with this man for seven years. I believe that he's on his best behavior because he's being investigated. Um, I have, uh, there's been issues from this drug use. Um, seven years. It's it's a long history, and I don't believe it has stopped. I, I don't. I think that he needs treatment for it. Um, he has body issues. He is a skinny man, and he wants to be big and muscular. That's that's his goal. Um, I I also I I mean I don't think I should have to pay for that test. It doesn't even test for what he has taken. He admitted to taking morphine in court. I think it was March first or third. Um, he admitted to taking it. That's illegal. Getting drugs from someone, a prescription drug from someone and taking it is illegal. He admitted to that in court. And I don't know why he wasn't tested right then and there. Why, why did that not happen? It, the 90 days has passed to where that would even show up on a drug test. So I'm very frustrated. All right. Thank you. Mr. Mills, any response? Um, well, I'm... If I must take another drug test, I'm fine with that. But I mean, I miss work for this and I live paycheck to paycheck. I had to borrow money to pay for that last drug test. If I need to take another one and she wants me to, I just want her to pay for it. If it comes back with a positive, I'll pay for it. But <laughs> I mean, I can't, I know it's going to come back negative. I can't, I can't afford this. All right, well, uh, Mr. Mills, you've indicated that you're willing to take the test. Um, I, I think in order to get this done as quickly as possible, I'm gonna have to have you um, pay for it initially. If it comes back negative, then both of these tests would be the obligation of Ms. Mills to pay. Your for. Honor, I, I, I can't afford to pay for these and I, if Tina Day isn't concerned that he was using it back in June or July and that he has stopped just for the sake of this investigation, I don't want to pay for it either. You know what? I know in my heart what he's done and he does too. Um, but he, I, I believe he will, he will pee clean or test clean um, today. Okay, then I'm not going to order the 17 panel uh, hair follicle test. But I, I also, I don't feel good about paying for that other test because I don't know why it was recommended by the court if it didn't even test for what I was concerned about. I don't know anything about drug tests. Okay, we'll, we'll get to that issue in, in just a moment. The second issue is the insurance on the Kia Soul, Mr. Mills. You uh, are requesting that Ms. Mills pay um, $1,128 for the insurance. Uh, correct. When Rebecca took the car. I told her it had no insurance and I needed to like try and sell the car because I couldn't afford it. When she left me, I was unemployed with thousands of dollars of unpaid bills. And I understand that she needed a car, but then when she had a car, 
provided for her from her boyfriend. She still kept the car and then came to court every hearing saying how badly she needed it, despite it was just sitting parked. And she kept it just to be vindictive and hurt me financially. She only did, kept it to do that. She had no use for it. So in this time, when I could not, I could not afford it, I could not pay for it, it had no insurance. So Red Canoe Credit Union added their own insurance. They put a six-month premium. And when I got the car back, I put on the cheapest insurance I could. And they refunded me um, three months of that six months. But the car was not in my possession. And Rebecca held on to it just to financially hurt me. I don't think I should be responsible for the, the insurance that was added on top of the loan in this time. Ms. Mills, any response? Um, when I had taken the car, it did have insurance on it. I think I had had it for a month or two before he took the insurance off of it. He even asked me to pay half of his water bill that he accumulated, him and his girlfriend, in our home because he said, I'm paying the insurance on your car. Um, can you help me with the water bill? And I said, no, I don't have money. I, I don't have an income. I don't know where he thinks I have this money from that I never had. I don't have money. I don't work a job. I don't. Um, he also threatened that um, the car was going to be repoed, that he was just going to come and take it. Um, he did threaten that there was no insurance on the car, but he was making a lot of threats and they didn't come and take the car. So I found out that there was no insurance on my vehicle on the Kia Soul. Um, I don't remember what month it was, but I got a flat tire and I was out of town with the children and I was stranded and no insurance. Um, I believed that that was just another threat that Samuel was making. All right. So what's going to happen? I'm with sorry. Can I also, I did not sign on that loan that says you need to keep insurance on your vehicle. Samuel made that agreement with the bank. I didn't make that agreement. Okay. So in the future, uh, this case is going to go first to a settlement conference. And then if you can't resolve the, um, some of the property and debt issues, then you'll need to go to a trial in order to resolve that. And there will be lots of pieces at the trial in terms of how the debt gets allocated and how the assets get allocated. What I'm going to do on this insurance issue is defer it to be resolved either at a settlement conference at a trial when lots of these issues can be looked at at once. So um, I'm not going to make a decision on that today. Uh, but it, it is something that can be brought up later. Uh, the next issue is the $430 for the um, hair follicle test that came back negative. Mr. Mills? Um. Well, she says she has no money, but she's willfully unemployed. She has, she is a licensed cosmetologist. She has childcare. There are people who can watch the children for her. She can have a job if she wants a job. It's just very convenient for her to not be employed. Um, and the hair follicle, the agreement was if it came back negative, she would pay for it. I had to borrow money and take time off work when I'm living paycheck to paycheck to get this done. Uh, Ms. Mills, um, I know you, you've argued that you shouldn't pay for a test that didn't test for what you were concerned about. Yeah, I, I don't think that I should. That's what was recommended by the court. And I thought that that would be testing for what, my, what I was concerned about. And it didn't even test for the drug that he's admitted to taking. <laughs> All right, the order uh, that I entered was that uh, Mr. Mills do a hair follicle test. If it came back negative, Ms. Mills would pay for it. It did come back negative. And so I'm gonna um, enforce that order. I will um, assess that uh, charge to Ms. Mills. Um, that also may be something that will have to be dealt with either at a settlement conference or at the final, um, uh, at the trial of this case. Uh, let's go to uh, communication between the parties. Mr. Mills, you, you do not want to communicate through Robert anymore. Is that right? That, uh, that is correct. But we have 
just within the past, I think, week or two, um, started using a parenting app to communicate directly. Okay, so you started to do that? Yes, Your Honor. All right, then I will um, I will allow that. Um, Mr. Mills, I will say that the discussion should only be dealing with issues with the children, I believe, with the parenting app and uh, and not other issues. Of course. Okay. Uh, there's the issue of what happened to the tax return. Ms. Mills, I think you brought that issue up. Um, the question from my notes uh, is whether the tax return payment went to the payment of debts. I've asked um, Mr. Mills to provide some evidence of that. Um, again, uh, just to short circuit this a little bit, I'm going to defer that issue for either the settlement conference or trial. Your Honor, may I say something? Sure, please. Um, I did on my, I believe it was my first financial declaration. I have submitted three at this point, but I believe the first one, I have attached my bank statements and I think I highlighted or underlined where the tax return was deposited. And then within a single day, I spent over what I got in the bills that I had, because as I mentioned earlier, um, when Rebecca left me, I was unemployed and had thousands of dollars of our bills. And when the tax return went in that very day, I spent every single cent of it on bills. Can I interject there? Um, I went and I looked at the payments that he made and there's like one payment for a phone bill. There's one payment for Comcast. Um, there's uh, transfers to the vehicle loans. It's, it's, it's his monthly payment that I want proof that it paid the bills that we accumulated together as a married party. So that was from, I think the date that we ended our marriage uh, that I left the home was back in December. Um, he's showing, I, I'd like proof that those are the bills that I paid was back from December, not from February. And also one of the bills that he highlighted, um, I'm looking at it right now, was from the Oasis bar. He spent $79, almost $80, and he highlighted that and added it. So, I mean, he has money to go spend $80 at the bar. Okay. Ms. Mills, um, your points are well taken. Again, I'm going to defer that issue, and um, that'll either need to be addressed at the settlement conference or a trial, um, but I, I think being able to trace where the tax return funds went, which I, um, I'm i sure are community property um, assets um, is, is gonna be important at that point. Um, I think Ms. Mills raised the issue of um, whether Mr. Mills refinanced the car. To, was that the, the Kia Soul, Ms. Mills, that you yes. believe refinanced? He, he refinanced it and added on five thousand dollars from a credit card onto the Kia Soul balance. Um, I don't have any proof of that. These are all in his personal bank accounts. He went and he made his own account and put that Kia Soul in his own private account. He took it from our shared account and put it into his private account. I want to say it was in October, but I'm not positive. So I mean, it was just months before we split up. Mr. Mills, any response? Um, well, I refinanced that to get rid of our credit card debt so that we had our bills um, consolidated. So there's just one payment and that was the Kia Soul. Um, I did, I believe on that first financial declaration, there is all the Kia Soul loan information in there. I'm fairly certain that that is there. Um, but I'm not asking her to pay for any of that loan other than what the insurance that was added on top of it was. Okay. All right. Um, does that address your issues if he's not asking you for you to pay for any of that? Ms. Mills. Um, I, I on the balance of the Kia Soul, that's fine. If he's going to take over that, I'm fine with it. Um, 
but I mean, the, the insurance is concerning to me. That's his loan. That's his vehicle. Um, he was the one who removed the insurance and didn't put it back on. Have, you, um, have you provided the Kia sold to Mr. Mills at this point? Yes, I did. I believe we had it. Uh, I had like three days to give it back and I got it back to him in that time. Okay. And Mr. Mills, what, what, what are your plans with the Kia Soul at this point? I need to make, I'm underwater in it right now. So I need to make some payments on it, which is difficult for me right now, but um, I'm going to pay it down to where I can sell it for what I owe. Okay. I just, I, the car was in her possession, despite her already having a car and the bank added a premium on top of it for the insurance and i just want that reimbursed um i understand that we're going to defer that issue right okay. are you requesting any um car payments um uh, be made up by Ms. mills no i'm not i only my only concern is that 1128 okay uh, the next issue is whether Mr. Mills should take an anger management class. I had already ordered that. And then Ms. Mills is asked that he take a parenting class. Um, Ms. Mills, do you want to address that issue? Um, well, which which part the parenting class yeah the parenting class i've already ordered the okay. anger management class um i just know that sam has put the kids in dangerous um positions in our time together um which was a big reason of me being a stay-at-home parent i did not feel like my kids were safe when they were home with samuel um one time when my children were one and three he left them home alone and went to the store that is maybe three blocks away um, I mean, five, 10 minutes maybe, but a lot of dangerous things can happen in five to 10 minutes when no parent is present, um, that's endangering a child. Um, he, he, he's been careless with them. Um, and me being the primary parent and now him having time alone, I think that it's very necessary so that things like this don't happen in the future. Um, Mr. Mills, any response? um yeah well that was a few years ago and that was a big mistake and i i recognize that now and i mean i recognize that more like earlier like a long time ago that was a, that was very stupid of me i went to the grocery store that is like two or three blocks away to get stuff for dinner that we were missing um other than that i completely disagree that i put my children in dangerous positions as the guardian ad litem has said, she does not believe there's any risk of harm to the children in my care. I think the parenting class is extremely unnecessary. Can I add something? Yes, briefly. Um, me being the primary parent for five years, I have educated myself and taken parenting classes. They have free resources available. Um, I think that even if you are a perfect parent, you can still benefit from taking a parenting class and you can find free ones. It's just your time and your dedication. Okay, I agree with Ms. Mills on that. Um, I think there's a parenting class called Children in Between that assists parents in, in parenting skills um, when they're going through a disillusion. So I'm gonna order that both parents attend or um, uh, attend that either in person or online. Um, you could contact um, Ms. Day, the guardian ad litem, and she can help you locate that class. What was it called? Children in Between. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, the next issue is a domestic violence evaluation. I think I already ordered that. That needs to be done within 60 days of May 3rd. I have a question. Um, okay, briefly, yes. Go ahead. Mr. 
Miss Mills. We don't hear you again. I don't know why that's the case. I don't know either. Are you there? I'm here. Can you oh, hear there me? you go. Good. You're back. Okay. Okay. I'm so sorry. Um, is call? that is that the the domestic violence? Um, I can't think of what it's called right now. Sorry. Um, is that where I go in and I um, account? You know what all went on, and then he is counseled according to that. Is that what that is? What's that called is you, you provide collateral information. Okay. The domestic violence person and that that is something that I think should be done. Okay, perfect. I so agree. Mr. Mills needs to let you know who he's being evaluated by so you can contact them. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, I think uh, two more issues here. One is um, to have Ms. Mills remove her name from the primary PUD account at the house. Can you do that? I can do that. Yeah, I can get that done today. Okay, I'd like that done in the next, well, I'll tell you when we're gonna come back. Um, we're gonna come back here on June 28th um, and the guardian ad litem indicated she'd have a report done by then. Um, between now and then, I would like the visitation that I've ordered to remain the same. And then we may make some changes, probably will make some changes after I get the guardian ad litem report. I have a question. All right, please. Um, there has been some confusion about pick up and drop off and who's doing that and where we're doing it at. Um, I know originally I, I was concerned with the protection order, him coming to the house. Um, but then it was, I think you responded and said that we needed to do it at Angela's house. His sister, she no longer wants to be any part of this. Um, I, I, I'd really like if he could pick up and drop off at our home. Can we get that ordered? Mr. Mills, any response to that? Um. I mean, I don't see why it can't be flexible. We've been doing at Target, which is a good middle spot for both of us. And again, I I struggle to pay my bills right now. So, and gas is a big bill of mine because I work in Oregon City. So I have I'm spending almost two hundred dollars a week in gas. So I mean. I don't mind like every once in a while picking up from her place, but if for the most part we can meet at Target, that works a lot better for me. Any objection to Target, Ms. Mills? I have three kids and a family. I have to <laughs> feed dinner at six o'clock. That's a horrible time. Um, I, I, aside from my kids, I also care for another child. Um, he doesn't have re any responsibilities outside of picking up his kids and dropping them off. Um, and I, I also would like to address that um, during since our last hearing, um, Samuel got off work late um, and he wanted to pick the kids up late. Um, I mean, like an hour, an hour and a half late. That is their bedtime. So if Samuel, for any reason, can't make it to pick up time, um, is there a time cutoff we can enforce? My kids are in bed by, I put them to bed at like 7, 7.30. Um, and I think that keeping their routine is so important. Um, they're going to be going to school soon. Um, and Samuel didn't really seem to care. He, he just wanted his time. Um, I offered to meet him. I said, if you can't make it by 630, I can meet you at 10 a.m. The, the following day. Um, and can we enforce something like that for future pickups? How far do you live from Target? Three minutes. Um, three miles. Okay. All right, Mr. Mills, I'm going to um, have pick up and drop off at Ms. Mills' house. Um, I think the um, cutoff time would be the kids' bedtime. Uh, okay. If you make it before their bedtime, then the visitation goes forward. Okay, um, so would that be 7 p.m. then? Mr. Mills, go ahead. Um, I believe 
we've been we've been doing six o'clock pickup and drop off and i i think i don't know what law it is but i think that in kelso longview area i have an hour window to pick up my kids so as long as i make it by seven i'm fine well, that appears to be their bedtime. Um, so if you want to have that flexibility, if you're there after seven, then it would have to be the next morning. Okay. All right. All right. I think I've addressed um, all of those issues. We'll see everybody back here on June Your Honor. 8th. I, and, I uh, and then... I'll probably have you set this case for a mandatory settlement conference at that time. Okay. Your Honor. Yes, sir. I believe we, and I'm sure it's going to be pushed off to the settlement, but there's also the issue of the credit card debt. That is something I'd have to defer to um, that time um, and address that. So that that will be, you know, two months away or so, uh, certainly the settlement conference will come up fairly quickly when you can discuss that. Okay. Your Honor, so, um, of some of the abuse that took place um, that I, I'd like to share with you. Um, I don't know how to get that to you though, how to submit that to the court. So um, typically uh, what you would need to do is um, drop that off as a thumb drive okay clerk's office and provide a copy to mr mills okay and do that so that i can review it before the hearing okay perfect and i have to review it on on a computer that's not a county computer so i have to do it on my my home computer um when something comes from outside of our outside of the county so okay. That's why I need it dropped off sometime before and then um, provide it to Mr. Mills. Okay. 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 Thank you both. And uh, we'll see you back here on June 20th. Thank you. Your Honor, Tina Day here on the Mills matter. Yes. If we could call that fairly early, that would be helpful. I have another matter at 1030. Okay. Let's, um, let's go ahead and call that. I would just note for the parties, um, some of you know, I am uh, somewhat filling in on this docket a little bit last minute. And I did notice that a video was filed in this case. Um, so I want to talk about that just briefly. So let's go ahead and call that case. Do we have uh, Samantha Mills and Rebecca Mills present? Rebecca's here. It'd be Samuel Mills. Thank you. Samuel Mills. Present. Thank you. Okay. Um, this is 233-0007208. I have the parties present. Um, is the is DSHS represented in this case? Yes, Casey Looney is here on behalf of the state for the Division of Child Support, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Let me jump into my digital file here. Um, I have this on um, for a review hearing and it looks like temporary orders to be issued or discussed today. Am I correct in that? Yes, Your Honor. It's a review of the um, GAL report to see if any changes need to be made. Um, I think that the current visitation schedule, the parents, the parents probably wanna have some discussion about that. Okay. And then let me grab what was handed to me yesterday. Um, looks like it's a USB drive with video. And um, is this, I need to ask, is this evidence that the submitting party believes is necessary to enter orders? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And Rebecca Mills, are you the one who filed this? Yes. Yeah, I didn't, all I got was the, the envelope and the thing in it with the case number. Um, okay, so Your Honor, I don't believe any of the other, I don't know if Father has, but I certainly don't know if those are videos that I've already seen and reviewed and included in my report or if that is something new and different. 
That was not shared with myself. I don't know if Mr. Mills received it. Okay. So yeah, so let's do that first. Mr. Mills, are you, and, and I will be honest, we can't put these in county computers, so I don't know what's on it yet. Um, so Mr. Mills, ha have you received a copy of video? No, I have not. Ms. Mills, can you just tell me briefly what the relevance, just a brief outline of the relevance of what this video is so I can decide whether we need to continue this case and make sure all the parties have a chance to see this? Um, yes, I had submitted a, a little declaration kind of describing what had um, happened in the video, um, but I think that it's important for you to hear it for yourself. Um, I think it speaks a lot to Samuel Mills' character. Um, his carelessness as a father. Um, in the videos, he is um, being abusive, and I believe um, it's considered torture. He was not allowing me to sleep at 10, 11, 12, 1 a.m., maybe even 2 a.m. He was not allowing me to sleep. He was throwing oh. my pillows. Okay, so let me, um, I do see the declaration in the file. So, um, Ms. Day, it looks like this is a video from a many, many, many years ago. No. Uh, but the, well, your declaration says eight plus years ago. N no, that's not correct. This video is from, I want to say it was October of just last year. This was two months before we separated. Okay. So if those are the um, videos that I, that were shared with me previously during my investigation, then I did see those. Um, I reviewed those. Um, I do and did agree that there was um, some concerns and issues regarding domestic violence, and I recommended an evaluation for father. I did not find that that abuse was to the level of a need to restrict father's contact with the children. Um, by that time in the marriage, the, the situation between the parties had become quite volatile, and there are different reports from different persons. Um, those were video recordings that appeared to be taken by mother, um, without consent or knowledge. I don't know if my father consented, it did not appear so. And so I took those at just at face value. And I considered that in conjunction with the other evidence that I discovered in my investigation to recommend that father complete a domestic violence evaluation and then follow any recommendations in there. I did not find that there was um, a significant amount or any reason to restrict father's time with the children. Okay. So, Mr. Mills, given the kind of brief discussion of what's on this video, are you aware of the contents of this? I'm not entirely sure, but everything described in it of me not letting her sleep, she's done that to me more times than I can count. So she's saying that I'm torturing her. She has performed the same behavior towards me when we've gotten in an argument. and I've tried to sleep on the couch. She's flicked the lights on, thrown my bedding, shoved me around, hit me. And then called the police to have them remove remove me from the house, and they show up and say no crime is committed. And then I sign a piece of paper and they leave. Okay, so let me ask the parties this: I'm, um, you know, telling you all I have not reviewed what's on this USB, and I can't review it sitting here on the bench right now. Um, so one of two things, Ms. Mills, you could choose not to introduce this video into evidence to me, and I can certainly take. Um, at face value, the fact that the GAL has reviewed it and incorporated it into her recommendations. And so we could proceed with discussing the orders today, um, or we could do um, a set over, I will be gone next week. So it'd have to be at least two weeks um, before we could get this back on the docket. So Ms. Mills, let me ask you first, what is your preference? If this is just for temporary orders, I'm okay with continuing for today. Um, I know that Commissioner Nelson, who was typically on our case, said that I could submit that to him and he could watch it on his personal computer. Correct. That was the discussion that we had had. So I don't know if you can get that over to him or how that works, but I would like for him to see it eventually. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're in agreement, um, for, for because it is discussed um, via the GAL, if you're in agreement to go ahead and discuss the temporary orders without it, certainly nothing would preclude you from bringing that video into evidence um, if and when this case goes to trial. 
So are you comfortable proceeding in that manner? Yes. Okay. I think I do have your temporary orders. Let me find those. Did both parties have a chance to review uh, Ms. Day's report? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And are there any objections to her report? Um, I have a few, not necessarily to her report, but the things that were in it. So uh, what I have in front of me, tell me if I should have something else. I have a temporary parenting plan that was submitted by uh, Ms. M or excuse me, Mr. Mills. And I have a temporary um, It doesn't look like there's any restraining order requested with it. Um, so I have two temporary orders. Should I have anything else? Um, I do have a no contact order on Samuel Mills. Is that, that's something that's already been signed though. I'm asking if there's yes. anything that your the folks are asking the court to review today. No. Yeah, I'm just oh, double check, checking my stack to see if anything else came in. Um, Samuel did serve. I was served with papers late last night from Samuel Mills. Um, and I have prepared a, just a written statement that I can read if you'll allow it in response to that. Okay. So when you were, when you say you were served last night, are you talking about the, there's one labeled a temporary family law order. And then there's a temporary parenting plan. Um, Are those the documents you were served last night? I don't believe so. What were you served last night? I think it was a declaration. Are you talking about the declar a declaration from Mr. Mills? That it was a signed? declaration from Mr. Mills, and also it was his certification of completion of the parenting class. Okay. Um, and the one I have is dated June 25th. Is that what you are referring to? Um, yes. Okay. And Ms. Day, have you, did the parties give you a copy of their proposed orders? No, Your Honor, I've not received any documents from either of the parties in the last two weeks. Okay. So no temporary orders, no declarations. I want to say that those temporary orders were filed at the very beginning before um, Ms. Tina Day was uh, appointed to us. I could be wrong. Okay, so Mr. Mills, have you submitted any current temporary orders that you're asking the court to sign today? I do not believe so. I think everything I've submitted has been looked over. Okay. So let's talk about the GAL report then, and we'll come back to the orders in a minute. Um, so uh, Mr. Mills, let's start with you. You had a chance to review the report. Have you also had a chance to review the recommendations in the report? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. As far as the recommendations, um, are you are you objecting to the court adopting any of those recommendations for purposes of temporary orders? For temporary, um, yes. I I don't think Rebecca should have the kids primarily. I don't think their best needs are with her. Sorry, I'm having a little trouble hearing you. Can you speak up? I, I don't agree with Rebecca remaining the primary parent for the children. I do not believe she has their best interests at hand. I think she is very selfish and self-involved. And she, I think she really needs a psych evaluation. And I would, I've been compliant with everything I've been doing. I have jumped through all the hoops 
And now I just would like that Rebecca had to start doing some things. So I want to see her get a psych evaluation to make sure she's mentally fit. She has had, she has lied and manipulated through all her declarations. There is fallacies in every single one. The one I, I woke up this morning at 1 a.m. for work and had a declaration on my porch. So I barely had time to read that, but it's full of lies as well. And she's just, I don't believe that the children should be around that behavior. She is impulsive and self-interested. She has, throughout our entire marriage, she has kept us in peril because of her impulsiveness. She has blown all our money. She's gone through, I think, over 20 cats, maybe seven or eight dogs. Um, I think about four or five rabbits. I think 12 guinea pigs, six rats, um, numerous hundreds of dollars fish tanks. I think like at least six large fish tanks. And then she's recycled fish through them. Like she'll buy a whole school of fish for the tank, get bored of them, sell them, and then buy a whole different breed of fish. And she gets these animals. She neglects them. She doesn't care for them. They defecate and urinate all over the house. And she sees no problem with this sort of behavior. And recently, my five-year-old son told me that they got ducks. And then a couple weeks later, he said, oh, we got rid of the ducks. We got a puppy now. And she's just continuing the same behavior. That's, that's not the behavior of someone who's well. Okay, so your objective, I've made note that you, you're you objecting to the parts of the report, uh, naming her primary. What else are you objecting to, if anything? Um, I believe just her being the primary. I, I have not been able to recently, I've been working uh, long hours the past week, so I haven't really been able to reread that report. And have you completed the domestic violence evaluation? I have a meeting on the 5th. I have scheduled it, but it had to be several weeks out. So you have not, you have not done the eval? Not yet. I'm waiting to be seen on the 5th. And I have... Um, I have scheduled a meet with a lawyer on August 23rd. So in regards to anything deciding the custody of the children, I would like that to be pushed back until I can meet with my lawyer. You are hiring a lawyer? Yes. When are you meeting with a lawyer? August 23rd. Oh, that's a ways out. Okay. All right. Anything else you want the court to know? Um, off the top of my head, I think that covers it. Okay. Um, Ms. Mills, let's talk about your review of the GAL report. Um, there were a few things in there that I disagree with, not with Tina Day's um, recommendation. Um, I mean, I kind of disagree with that. Um, there were just a lot of lies in there um, coming from Samuel and his mother. Yeah. And let's, so I understand that probably, probably every party disagrees with the other party's statement of facts in these types of proceedings. I'm, I'm looking specifically at the recommendations portion. Mm -hmm. So as we're crafting temporary orders, that's my main concern. Um, I certainly will leave for trial um, the truth of the matter, the matters asserted by parties. But as far as the recommendations for um, visitation and residential time, summer schedules, communication, those sorts of things, um, are you generally in agreement with the recommendations of that report? I am in agreement that I should remain the custodial 
parent. I have been a stay at home mom to these boys since they were born. Okay. Um, what about the, um, the visitation time proposed? The visitation, I have some slight disagreement with. Um, since the beginning, I have said um, that I hoped for every other weekend that he that they go with dad. Um, and she also added in Wednesday nights, which I think is a nice touch. Um, maybe only doing that on the weeks that they don't see them see him on the weekend. Oh no! Alternating weeks, but every other weekend for visitation. I think that it is really important for the kids to get to be with both families for weekends. We have missed out on a lot of fun activities with the kids and the kids with us. Um, we love camping. We love taking the boys places, but that can only take place on the weekend. Um, so I, 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 I hope that I can have equal weekend time. Okay. Anything else you want the court to know? Mm -hmm. okay. Ms. Day, I will turn to you at this point. You heard a little bit of feedback from the two parties and I'm interested to hear from you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the current visitation schedule right now allows father to have every weekend. I thought that it made appropriate sense now that we were moving forward from kind of emergent orders that father would have um, first, uh, first, third and fourth weekends giving mother second and fifth if there is a fifth. I think that's appropriate. She has primary care. She is a stay at home parent. She has all week with the children and father is working. I think that makes good sense. It provides appropriate time for the boys to have time with both families. And yes, everybody will have to make adjustments. I mean, I think that's just a reality when parents separate and they have to share their time. The children have to share their time with both parents. Um, I did uh, um, ask for additional time in the summer and of course shared holidays, et cetera. Um, but I, my hope was that it would help to settle the boys into a more normal routine and it would allow mom to have some weekend time with her new partner and his child to do things that they, as she just described, without restricting or limiting father's time. There's just no simple reason to restrict. And father is asking for, um, at least initially was asking for uh, joint custody. Mother has always been asking for primary and sought to have father's time restricted completely. I don't think either of those are in the best interest of these children or appropriate based on the history of this family and how things have played out since then. But I do think regular time, consistent time. I think the midweek visit is important because I think five days without seeing their dad is is detrimental to them and can these are young children who need that frequent contact and I think that if father's able to be off of work that that would work very well for the boys if father's not able to be off of work in time to do that then those are just kind of real life circumstances so those are those are my primary things to add I do ask that the parents continue to communicate um, via text or use a parenting app to kind of limit the uh, conflict that has gone on I would ask the court to order that their communication only occur as it pertains to the boys um, or if necessary to the divorce as far as, you know, property and things like that. The texting of inappropriate information, name calling, videos, um, personal intimate encounters that are happening outside of the marriage and the divorce I just think are really inappropriate and only seek to inflame and create more conflict. So as far as the the recommendations from the GL report um, for purposes of orders at this time, I, I would adopt those as the court's uh, orders for visitation. I think they're well thought out. I think they conform to the evidence in this case that I've reviewed. Um, and again, certainly Ms. Mills and Mr. Mills, this doesn't preclude the parties from um, addressing this through, you know, formal trial and fact finding, I believe. And do you all have a trial date set? I don't think so. No, that would be the next step. Um, if father's going to obtain an attorney, he might want to wait for that, but it would yeah. probably be a good suggestion to at least get a trial assigned and a settlement conference assigned. Yeah, I think that is a good idea. And First, with regard to these orders, and Ms. Looney, I'll ask for your input here in just a second. Um, I don't have any orders in front of me that comply with the GAL recommendations. And I do see, as Ms. Mills pointed out, 
the ones that were submitted to the court for today's hearing are were drafted back in February of 2023. Um, Ms. Day, let me ask you in a situation like this, I know this is was Mr. Nelson's docket, would he typically just prepare his own parenting plan order or would he ask the parties to su submit? He would ask the parties to submit in the in the family law matters. They would need to submit those orders and everybody would need to see them. So we could maybe set a presentation for two weeks that would give Mr. Mills time to prepare the temporary orders and share them with Ms. Looney and myself to make sure that they're appropriate. And then we can either come back to court if everybody agrees. If everybody doesn't agree, if everybody agrees, we can just submit them for your signature. I think that's a, a great plan. Mr. Mills, I will... Um have you as petitioner prepare the new um, temporary parenting plan order and circulate to the parties. Um, there's also, Ms. Looney, let me turn to you. What is the uh, state's uh, ask in this case? Thank you, Honor. Um, we were waiting for the custody issue to be determined before we address child support. So our request would be that we um, set this to the 19th of July, which would give us time to get out a proposed child support order and circulate that as well so that we could do everything at the same time. I think that's that works great. Ms. Day, will the 19th work for you? Yes, that works for me. And if Father can prepare those orders and email them, everybody can have a chance to look at them and maybe make some adjustments if necessary. That's great. Now, Ms. Mills and Mr. Mills would uh, renoting this for July 19 to finalize these uh, temporary orders work for the two of you. Again, it would be on our 9 a.m. docket via Zoom. Um, it works for me. I, I'm not sure I might have uh, obligation to my union hall that week. Okay, let's go ahead and set July 19th, since you're not sure whether that will work or not. Let's set July 19th at nine o'clock. Mr. Mills, if you do have a work obligation that comes up and you know about it, you know, a week ahead of time, please reach out to the court and they can work with you on rescheduling, okay? Okay. Um, may I interject about the parenting plan? I'm sorry. I was just waiting for a, a good moment, but there wasn't one. Um, what, what part do you mean? I did uh, hear from you on your objections. Well, okay. So the suggestion where I miss the second weekend of every month. Um, where, so she Rebecca, gets that, where she gets second and fifth. Yes. Are you objecting to that? Yeah, I don't see why she needs any weekend. She's home with them all day, and her boyfriend's days off are Monday and Tuesday. The weekends well, really mean. Well, so here's here's why the court is going to do that. Um, where a parent has children Monday through Friday, typically that means that that parent is doing a lot of um, just education and learning with them. The weekends are the fun time. I'm not going to take away. Um, a weekend here and there from the parent who's doing the Monday through Friday work. Rebecca has never. All right, Mr. Mills, that's my, that's going to be my ruling. I understand your objection. Okay. You are welcome to raise this at trial for your permanent orders. Um, but I am not going to budge on that issue with your temporary parenting plan. Okay. So we've got this reset to July 19th at 9 a.m. And Mr. Mills, if that runs into a conflict with your work, please let the court know. Is there anything um, else we need to do on this case? I, I'm i sorry, May. This is related to Tina Day's suggested parenting plan. So it's, it refers to the holidays. Um, it says that I get the children July 4th and 5th this year. Um, I'm off all weekend and through the, the, the 5th. So I, according to that plan, I would have to take the children back to their mothers for one day just to take them back for two more. Okay, well, we won't be, this order wouldn't be signed until at least July 19th. So whatever current plan you two are operating under, would be in effect for next week. Okay. Is that your question? It wouldn't, it wouldn't be this. It would be however the two of you are working visitation right now. 
All right. Do you have a question about that? Uh, no, Your Honor. Okay. Okay, and then Mr. Mills, are you aware how to circulate proposed orders to all the parties for review? Um, not really, but I can figure it out. Okay, do you have contact information for Ms. Mills and Ms. Day? Yes. Okay, and then Ms. Looney, are you needing copies of those orders also? Sorry, Your Honor. Um, no, I don't. Um, okay. I just will be sending out the child support order. Okay, great. Okay, well, it sounds like we've done what we can do on this case today, and we'll see folks back here on July 19th at 9 a.m. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. And then, Ms. Day, I have you on Samuel Mills and Rebecca Mills. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. This is 233-0007208. And do I have Samuel Mills present? I am present, Your Honor. And Rebecca Mills. I'm here. Okay. And I will be honest with the parties. Uh, a minute before I started docket, I was handed Rebecca Mills' proposed parenting plan. So I have not had a chance to review it, nor have I had a chance to compare it to see where the differences may be. Um, I don't know, Mr. and Mrs. Mills, if the two of you have talked about these orders. No, we haven't. You have not. Okay. Let me just take a quick peek now while you're in front of me. I do see the child support order um, for Ms. Looney as well. Let me just take a quick peek and see if it's something where there's a lot of. There are a lot of differences. One of there them, are. he has custody and one of them, I have custody. So they differ greatly. Yeah, I see that. Okay. I think that mine um, more closely resembles Tina Day's recommendation. Okay. Does Ms. Day have a copy of your proposed plan, Ms. Mills? Yes. Okay. Um, what I'm inclined to do just because we're about 30 minutes before this docket would end, I would like to, since I now have Ms. Mills, your proposed parenting plan, I'd like to set this over one week so that I have time to thoroughly review where the disagreements are. And then when we come back, we can have very pointed conversations on those pieces of disagreement. Would that be acceptable to the parties? Um, I really was hoping that we would have well, Ms. Mills, you handed me a proposed parenting plan one minute before docket. So actually I had it in on Wednesday, last Wednesday, a week ago, Sam, I was served with his last night. Um, my reasoning is that it is my no, that's not what we're going to do. So Mr. Mills, do you have an objection? Uh, no, your honor. Okay, I'm not going to make a ruling off the cuff when I've been handed parenting plans at the last minute. So we're going to set this over one week and you guys will be back here at 9 a.m. and we'll go through the orders at that time. Your Honor. Um, yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Ms. Day. I have no objection to setting it over one week. I would just want to make sure that I was clear in the understanding. We had, we are supposed to be presenting the order from June 28th that adopted the GAL recommendations based on the commissioner, your ruling on June 28th. Um, I, I believe, don't believe that either of these are accurately reflecting that. Um, is there something that I could do that would help prepare that? Or is there something you want to just wait until next week? Yeah, I do see that, Ms. Day. You are absolutely correct. So it does, and then Ms. Looney, your proposed orders are based on the outcome of the prior, the court's prior ruling? That's correct, Your Honor. Okay, thank you and for pointing that out, Ms. Day. I had not, I had not caught that. 
Yes. And, and we were supposed to be entering the child support orders today, if I understood yeah. correctly. Yeah. As well. Okay. So I guess I'll turn to the parties. If you both have presented to the court orders that don't accurately reflect prior court orders or rulings, what, what's the reason for that? Um, my only difference is that I, I changed the weekends um, and, I, and I didn't include Wednesday nights. I have a protection order against Samuel and I think uh, four times a week doing exchanges is a lot. I think it's a lot on the kids. Um, what other areas? So let's go through this. I think Ms. Day's point that this is, you all were supposed to be submitting proposed orders in accordance with the report. Um, let's just move forward on it today so we can get this entered. So the ruling from June 28th, Your Honor, um, adopted the GAL recommendations, which were residential time to father on first, third and fourth weekend of every month as defined by Friday, beginning after work or 5 p.m. until Sunday at six and every week on Wednesday from after work or 5 p.m. until seven. And then any non-school or otherwise undesignated holidays would attach to the corresponding weekend. The holidays would be alternated moving forward um, with the division for Christmas or winter break, um, Thanksgiving, Father's Day and Mother's Day and July 4th. Summer would remain the same schedule as the school schedule with each parent having an additional seven day, two separate seven day blocks of time for vacation as would be appropriate. The parents would communicate using our family wizard or similar to maintain scheduling of appointments and providing notice without having to have direct contact. I do see that. And wait, the recommendation is that mother remains primary residential parent. That is correct. Okay. And there should be a restriction that prohibits any corporal punishment of the children and that both parents have equal and unhampered access to the children's medical, dental, education, and extracurricular activities and joint decision-making um, to include medical, dental, childcare, et cetera. Um, if the court would, would prefer, I can probably um, get that started to put together. I don't, I, I don't remember now what mothers said. I just knew it wasn't what was ordered. Yeah, and I think what I'll do, um... I think mothers is pretty close Okay. to take mothers proposed and amend per the guardian ad litem report. And I'll get that filed with the clerk uh, after docket today. Okay. And uh, then one other thing that ahead. I wanted to um, bring up to the court was father was ordered to complete a domestic violence evaluation, which he did complete. Um, and that I filed a copy of that one as soon as I received it. So the court would have that. I would note in that, um, that that was a collateralized report. And in that report, um, the evaluator, Stacy Crutcher McFadden, recommended that mother also have a domestic violence evaluation based on the reported information from both parents. So I would ask that the court include that today, um, that mother should also complete a domestic violence evaluation and provide a copy of that um, to the court. And it should be, again, collateralized. So Ms. Mills, um, have you received the um, recommendation? I think this was, it was filed with us back in June, about a month ago, yes. um, recommending a DV evaluation for yourself. Yes. Okay, have you been able to get that done? Um, no, it wasn't ordered yet, so. Okay, well, I'll go, I'm gonna go ahead and order that in the parenting plan. Um, so get that done as soon as you can. Okay. Um, the question, let's, I think Ms. Mills, you said if you were not, you thought that the visitation was too much given the protection order in place. 
I think that Wednesdays are Wednesday evenings. Yeah, I, I don't think that that's necessary. And I don't think that his work schedule will really allow it. I I don't see it happening. Um, but one thing that I did ask for was instead of first, third and fourth weekend for Samuel, I asked for first, third and fifth. Um, there are quite a few fifth weekends. I would just really like some weekends with my children. Um, my, I mean, my, my oldest son has a birthday coming up on August 4th and I'm aware that I'm going to miss this birthday, but I'd like a chance to have a birthday party for him where, you know, friends and family can, can come. So my reasoning for doing the first, third, and fourth, Your Honor, was to give mother the second and the fifth. There are generally three fifth weekends in a year. Father had been having every weekend. Mother was having none. Mother is not employed. She is home every day with the children. And so she is having the lion's share time. And it seemed appropriate to provide for the children's relationship with their father mm -hmm. at the most opportune times, which are the weekends and the evening. If father isn't able to do the Wednesdays, then I think that is appropriate. He needs to respond and let us know if he's able to. My understanding was he was. Yeah. And I'll, I'm going to keep, I think that that's um, good rationale for why we're doing first, third, and fourth. So that ma'am, you're having second and fifth, since you also stated there's several uh, periods with a fifth weekend. So I'm going to keep it as proposed in the GAL report, and I will amend your order in that effect. Mr. Mills, let me hear from you on the Wednesday pickup. Um, I can do Wednesdays, no problem. My, my issue and my reasoning for suggesting that I have primary custody is I truly don't believe that Rebecca's like stable. I okay, we're not, a, yeah, at this point, for purposes of entry of the temporary parenting plan, I am not going to readdress primary uh, residential parent. That will remain with Ms. Mills. Certainly, that could be an issue for trial or mediation for your permanent orders. So I just want to go back to the question I asked, which is, are you able to do the every week on Wednesdays pickup? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, we'll go ahead and keep that as proposed. And Your Honor, um, for the Wednesdays, um, I think I could be wrong, but I think she recommended um, that he drops off at 7 p.m. And yes. that is when we start bedtime. Usually our pickup and drop off is 6 p.m. So can we do, I mean, from the time he gets off work to 6 p.m. instead of 7 p.m.? This is an issue sir, we previously had. Sir, uh, when do you get off work? The I, I work construction and so the hours vary. Okay. Um, but six six p.m. is just not long enough. That's I don't have enough time with my kids. Every time I'm with my kids, they express to me that how much they miss me. My son, every time I've been Every weekend I picked my son up, he's told me, he straight up said, I love you more than mom. I wish okay. I was with you more than mom. Well, uh, yeah. Okay. I'm not considering that for purposes of this. Those are hearsay statements from a child made out of court right now. But what I am asking you is, do you typically pick up at 5 PM or is it earlier than that? I, I pick up for our current schedule, 6 PM. I would like it to be sooner but not have to have them back soon or not have to give them back to her sooner. You pick up at 6 p.m.? Yes. On Wednesday? Well, no, I haven't had Wednesdays. Oh, okay, okay. So it's, if you're, I would like to keep a two hour window. So what I will put in there is the default will be five to 7 p.m. Um, however, it's going to be two hours on Wednesdays. So sir, if, you know, if you're able to pick up at four, get them home by six. But our goal is to give you that two hours on Wednesdays, okay? Okay. Okay. And your honor. Go ahead. I don't know if you have a moment to just look over the parenting plan that Samuel proposed. Um, he was trying to give me every other weekend, but I don't understand why it's appropriate for him to not have every other weekend, but he think, seems to think that it is appropriate for me to have every other weekend. Yeah, I, so I'm not going off of his parenting plan. I'm going off of the GAL report. Okay. So we're going to stick with the recommended for purposes of the temporary plan. 
we are adopting the residential visitation time per the GAL report. Our, as far as the parenting plan, and I'm gonna go through this with a fine tooth comb to make sure what I sign complies with the GAL recommendation with the addition of the DV evaluation for mom um, and the uh, notation of two hours on Wednesdays, which is presumed to be five to 7 p.m., but can be earlier. Anything else we need to address on the record on the parenting plan? Okay, I'm gonna get that signed um, after docket and it will conform to the GAL report, but for the two items I just discussed. So let's move to the child support order. Your Honor, Go I'm, ahead, Ms. I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought for a moment. Um, in the parenting plan, I, I would like um, proof that he is complying with the DV treatment that was recommended before visitation. I did add that in mine to have it submitted to the court and myself. Can we add that? I'm just looking at the prior bench orders to see if it's already addressed. I don't believe it is. And I don't believe that was the order of the court, just that he comply with the evaluation and then follow. I think it would be appropriate to give a, you know, a deadline to begin. Um, I, I don't know if Mr. Mills has started yet. I know that he did complete the evaluation um, timely. So I would just ask that he start that as, at a certain date. So it not. Yeah. Um, Mr. Mills, have you had a chance to begin any treatment recommended? Uh, no, Your Honor. I was waiting for this hearing to hear what was ordered. Okay. About the completion of parenting class. Just looking. On his DV evaluation, she states that she um, she recommends 12 months of DV treatment for Samuel Mills and that I get evaluated. So I would hope that we would order the 12 months and I would just like proof that he's doing that before visits. So what I'm going to do is in the parenting plan, I'm going to note that he has completed his DV eval and he is to follow the treatment recommendation and provide proof. Um, I'm not going to put any caveat that that occur before visitation. I think the place that we're in and reading this report is, I think, uh, the evaluator's opinion was that both parties were contributing to the environment that they define as toxic. So um, I'm not going to put the requirement in that, that that proof take place before visitation, but I will um, reiterate in the parenting plan uh, miscellaneous orders that mom get a DV evaluation and comply with treatment. Dad has done his DV evaluation and he is to comply with the treatment recommended. Okay, thank you. And I had one other thing. Yes. Um, I have asked and we've said we'll address it at the next one. We'll address it at the next one. And we've never addressed it yet. Um, I would like to ask for the right of first refusal. Um, it's my understanding that on Samuel's weekends that the children are are left for him to go and work overtime, I, I believe with their grandmother, um, who I have issues with her being a caregiver. Um, just that anything over like two to four hours that I'm notified or asked first. And I think which grandparent are you referring to? I think she uh, is. It's Paula people. Klein. She's the one filing all of these. <laughs> um, and Ms. Day, since you had a chance to talk with Ms. Klein, were there 
concerns for you from a perspective of grandparent involvement? No, I did not have any concerns for either grandparent. Both have spent uh, regular time with the children. Um, Miss Klein specifically has spent regular time with the kids during the relationship and the marriage. Um, so I don't have any issue with that. Father doesn't generally work overtime, but there are occasions. And I think it's appropriate if he has a family member who is close by who can provide that child that child care for that few hours, um, should that become necessary. I think if it's overnight, like he's not going to be home, it should that should then be mother's time. I think that is reasonable and appropriate. Um, I, I've been told that he's leaving for work at like 1 a.m. And so his mother's having to stay the night so that he can go to work in the morning. And I, that, it makes me so uncomfortable. May, may I? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Mills. I've I've left for work. The earliest I've ever worked left for work is 3 a.m. And that has happened one single time. And that was during a weekday because I had a concrete pour I had to do. Okay. Um, so yeah. I don't know where she got that information. Yeah, I I don't think I have enough information, Ms. Mills, to make that kind of um, order in the parenting plan. Again, if you have specific and credible documentation that that's occurring on a regular basis, I would encourage you to bring it up when you guys, before you guys finalize uh, parenting plans. I am just going to say, I'm not putting this in the order, but I'm going to say orally that I think it is beneficial for the kiddos to be with uh, grandparents when parents aren't available, uh, beneficial for relationship for all parties, again, based on the evidence I have in front of me. So I'm going to decline to put any further restrictions on time with grandparents. Your Honor, I have submitted so many documents on Paula Klein. Um, she has, I mean, she has to self-medicate with marijuana all day. She's been in multiple car accidents. Her bumper is all busted up because she smokes weed and drives. Yeah. My children are not Mills. safe. Ms. And Mills. she used to abuse Samuel as a child. She right. remembers being hit for no reason by his mother. So leaving them is reckless. Okay. Oh, oh, so, man, hold on. Man, that's Mr. Mills, no, no, no. Mr. Mills, Ms. Mills, my ruling stands. I am a, I'm going to address the parenting plan per the GL report and our further discussions on the record. We are now moving to the child support order and worksheet as proposed by the state. So Ms. Looney, go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so we did prepare a proposed worksheet. We calculated parents' income. For Mr. Mills, we based that off his uh, employment security data for 2022. Um, we came up with a net monthly income of $3,627. Um, Ms. Mills, um, as a current TANF recipient, we have imputed her income at the current minimum wage for 32 hours per week per the statute, giving her a net monthly income of 1953. With a standard calculation for child support for, from Mr. Mills to Ms. Mills, will be $1,010 or $505 per child. And the state is requesting that that begin in March of 2023 as that is when the children began receiving TANF benefits. Uh, Mr. Mills, hold on a second. I will call on you when I am ready for you. So Mr. Mills, have you had a chance to review the state's proposed worksheets? Um, I, I've, I have, I've looked at it. Yes. Okay. Do you have disagreement with it? I do. Um, Rebecca has an online business that she's still been actively doing, so she's not reporting income. Okay. What other disagreements do you have with, with it? Um, it's too high. I can't afford that. Do you disagree with your wages at 4265 gross per month? Um, I believe I make less than that. Okay. What is your proposal? What are you telling me that you make? I mean, on... I only have overtime right now because it's summer. So through the rest of the year, my work's going to slow down. So I'll have an influx of income and then a deflux. And it'll probably be more around 3000 Okay. When do you expect that deflux to incur, occur? Excuse me. Within the next two months. 
Okay. And then that will go on until the rest of this year through the following year and up to next summer. Okay. So for, for the summer months, you're at a little bit higher wage and then come, let's say September, you're going to see it drop. Correct. Okay. Ms. Mills, let me ask you, um, your wages are being imputed because you do receive benefits, TANF benefits. Do you have other income producing activities that you perform? Um, I hand make tumblers. My income is so small um, and it varies greatly. Um, I would say maybe $200 a month to maybe $500 a month. Mm -hmm. So if we wanna go off of that. <laughs> May I interject? Yes, go ahead. I have submitted a declaration showing that she's active on multiple pages. She makes more than tumblers. She's, she's underplaying what she makes. She is trying to scam the system so that she can stay home and be taken care of by her new boyfriend and bring in as much money as the state will give her. I, she also has refused to give me the children's uh, birth certificates, which I finally was able to get new ones so that I could put them on my health insurance. I have informed their, her that the children are on my health insurance. And I said, hey, you should probably cancel the state insurance. It's not needed. I have very nice health insurance. And she's declined that. So if for some reason the state starts wanting to charge for that health insurance, I don't want to be responsible for it. I told Samuel to provide me with medical cards is what I told him. As well as declining to cancel it. I don't have the medical cards yet. They take multiple weeks to show up. I gave her the insurance numbers so that she can start using it, though. Ms. Looney, any input? I think specifically for me, it's on Mr. Mills, I guess, objection to his wages, which my, my inclination is to go ahead and set as proposed. Mr. Mills, you certainly could bring a motion to revise if and when you see income decrease. Um, these are temporary orders. Um, but Ms. Looney, I'll turn it over to you. And then I also have a question about whether the state wants to address um, right now, what appears to be admissions of an extra 200 to 500 a month on behalf of Ms. Mills. Uh, Your Honor, as far as Mr. Mills' income is concerned, uh, we did use his income from 2022, which is what was currently available to us. Um, during that year, he did consistently make over time throughout the year. Um, so we used that information to calculate his wages. Uh, as far as Ms. Mills, two to five hundred dollars additional income per month. Um, the parent who is not paying income changes child support very little, and that amount would not change the support enough to. Um, it, I don't even know that it would change the support amount, um, but if it did, it would just be a couple of dollars. Yeah, I think what I'm going to find on this, um, I do find that there is a basis in the record for Mr. Mills income historically. So although you may have fluctuations in income throughout the year, um, I do find that this accurately does reflect over time um, what you do receive. Ms. Mills, the imputed income is 2,188 uh, gross income per month. Certainly I think this court can find that um, if we were to look at actual income, it's probably going to be lower than that anyway. So I am going to go ahead and use the imputed 2,188 a month um, for Ms. Mills. I am going to sign the worksheet as proposed by uh, the state. And again, Mr. Mills, if you see a substantial change in income, there's nothing to preclude you from bringing this back for re-review by the court. Um, well, this that was based off my last job. I just got this job this year. 
And what I'm telling you is if you would like to bring a motion to have the temporary order changed because of a change in your income, you are free to do that. And Your Honor, the state would just like to remind Mr. Mills that if he does that, he does need to serve our office with a copy. Thank you, Ms. Looney. Okay, I have signed those orders. Um, I'm going to get the uh, parenting plan signed and filed after docket today, hopefully by about two o'clock. If any folks want to get a copy of that, um, it'll be available to you later this afternoon. Your Honor. Anything else on this matter? Go ahead, ma'am. Can we set a trial date to finalize this and get things moving? So what I, well, let's do this first. Let's do, we'll have to have a discussion. Um, so typically you folks would need to go to mediation on your permanent parenting plan. Um, if you want to provide a motion to have this court find good cause to waive mandatory mediation, you can bring that in front of this court and then we'll get you set on the trial assignment docket. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think in both of our filings, we both um, wanted to just go through court and not do mediation. And I've been advised um, to to try to waive that because of the protection order. Um, okay. we, we can't agree, it's, it's very clear. Okay, so why don't you do this? Let's, um, we could go ahead and set a date if you think that you could get a motion prepared um, asking this court to hold a, a very short hearing on whether to order mandatory mediation or find good cause to waive it, you would present that motion and order to me, and then we can have a short hearing on it. I can give you a date for that now if the parties plan to present that to me. Okay, and what motion, What do you know what that's called? The... Um, so look at our local civil rules. Okay. Um. I, ha I have had a, an appointment to meet with a lawyer set for August 23rd, and I, I don't want anything major to happen before I can speak with my lawyer. Okay, so let's do this then. It sounds like because you, you might be seeking counsel, let's not, let's not set a further date. But Ms. Mills, what I'm telling you is if you want to note on for any Wednesday 9 a.m. family law docket, your motion to waive mediation, please do so. Okay, thank you. Okay, anything else, Ms. Day or Ms. Looney? No, Your Honor. Okay. No, Your Honor. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Order of the cases I have here, um, several of these are review hearings, so I'll start with those. But let me just first ask, are there any parties that are going to be asking for additional time before proce proceeding today? Or they're going to be asking to have a matter taken off of today's docket? Um, I am your honor, Rebecca Mills. Okay, let's, let's go to your case, Ms. Mills. Do I have Samuel Mills present? I am present. Okay, and I think I saw Ms. Day already. Good morning, Ms. Day. Yes, Your Honor, I'm here. Okay, so this is uh, 2330007208 and 7708. Let me just get into that digital file here quickly. Give me just a minute. I originally had this on for presentation of um, temporary orders. So Ms. Mills, why don't you go first and let me know what you're requesting today? Um, I had, I don't know exactly what day I was served, but I know I had less than 10 days um, to respond. And with the holiday made that kind of tricky. Um, and I was also in the process of moving. Um, so I was not able to submit my response until yesterday morning. So I'm not sure if you even have that, but I would just like my things reviewed before we make any decisions today. Understood. So... Um, let me just get a little history here. It looks like back in July, there were um, temporary orders signed. And then what I have in front of me again are proposed temporary orders. So we can talk about that in a minute. 
But uh, Mr. Mills, I'll turn to you here in a second. I am seeing the declaration affidavit for, oh, no, that's for Ms. Mills, excuse me. Your note for motion docket for today um, didn't have any proof of service with it. And under our local rules, we do require that uh, the other party be given at least 21 days before it would be noted for hearing. So it's not timely based on what I have in front of me. Um, so Mr. Mills, are you objecting to continuing this matter? No, she's had it and she's responded. I have a response and she's filed her response. I don't see why we can't just do it now. It's not going to change. She's not filing anything new. Okay, well, I'm telling you, your note for motion docket was filed with us December 7th, and she is saying she wasn't served until just a, about a, 10 days ago. So I'm telling you that it's not timely under our local rules. If she wanted to proceed today, she can waive service, um, but she is telling me that she does want that additional time. Have you received her response? Yes. Okay. Ms. Day, any input on your end? Um, my only input, I'm not looking at um, when service was done, but I thought it was close to the date of filing, so the 8th or the 9th. So it might not be the full 20 days um, given the holiday. Um, so I think that that's understandable. I would ask that it not be set out more than a week or anything additional to that because the responses have been filed and the concerns in this matter um, should be reviewed by the court at the earliest possible date. Okay. And is it true that we're doing another temporary order? Is that the request at this time? Father is asking for a temporary order due to the um, concerns he had in mother's home with her new partner and um, change of residence and some other um, allegations that were made in that. So he was asking to have at least temporary custody of the children due to those concerns, a mother's responses, her attempt to allay those concerns, which is why I thought it should be reviewed sooner rather than later. Yeah. Okay, give me just a minute here. And Your Honor, um, Ms. Lindy, oh. for the stay on behalf of child support, um, I was just reviewing the docket and saw that there is um, a temporary child support order that should be before Your Honor. We were not served with a copy of that, so we would be requesting a copy of that before any decision was made about changing child support as well. Okay. And it looks like there are two, Ms. Looney, just so I tell the parties the right thing. Would you want each party's proposed new temporary order? Uh, we have information from Mr. Mills that we received okay. on the 22nd. Um, if Ms. Mills has filed additional information, we would need that as well, Your Honor. Okay. And I do believe we just got that. Actually, in Ms. Sorry, Mills. In Mr. Mills' oh, paperwork, yeah. we did not have the copy of the child support order. We did have the worksheets, but no order. Okay. Um, and I wasn't served with any of that, any of the child support information. No, she's saying that they don't have that either. What he filed was a motion for temporary order, a proposed parenting plan, and a declaration in support of that parenting plan. And then... Um, Ms. Mills, just so I know how much time we might need, um, on December 26, you filed a 20-page response. Are you intending to file your own proposed temporary parenting plan, or are you simply going to be asking the court to stick with the current temporary order in place? I just want to stick with the current in place. Okay. And that the current one in place, Ms. Looney, is the one that the current child support order is based on. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So then do I need to file anything if I'm not asking to change it? With no. You? Ms. Looney? Me, my understanding is no, but Ms. Looney can clarify. If she's simply okay. going to be objecting, you don't need anything else from her, correct? If she's not filing any additional paperwork, we would not need that, Your Honor. Okay. Um, I just saw that it was noted there was a temporary child support order that had been presented to the court for today that we did not receive. Okay. So Mr. Mills, if you are proposing um, the a new temporary parenting plan and a new child support order, make sure to serve those on the state of Washington through the prosecutor's office so they have a chance to review it before we make a decision. 
Okay, so serve state of Washington. Yes, through the prosecutor's office here in Cowlitz County. Okay. okay. So given that, uh, let me get my calendar out. It does sound like we want to get this heard pretty quickly since we are very close to the 21 days, but not quite there. Um, I could, I could hear this depending if the parties thought they'd be ready. I could hear this um, next Wednesday, January 4th, or we could set it to January 11th. It would be the third of I'm sorry. Yep, you're right. I'm looking at 2023. I'm going to keep doing that for probably another month. Okay. Uh, so the third, January 3rd or January 10th? Uh, the sooner the better. Ms. Looney, how much time would the state be asking for? We would just need time to review the order, Your Honor. Um, if we needed to present something different, that might change our time frame. But if the court is wanting to decide the issue of the parenting plan more timely, we can always request another hearing date for the okay. child support matter. Okay. So, Mr. Mills, I am just so that the state can be as prepared as possible for whatever the court might rule, please serve that today or tomorrow on Ms. Looney's office. And we'll just set this over one week to January 3rd at 9 a.m. Okay. Ms. Mills, will that work for you? Yeah, I just wanted time for you to be able to look over everything before any decisions were made. Understood. Okay, we'll get you um, set on for review of uh, Mr. Mills proposed temporary orders on January 3rd at 9 a.m. And Ms. Day, I forgot to ask, I apologize, are you available next Wednesday? Yes, uh, that's fine, Your Honor, I appreciate okay. that. Thank you, I'll be okay. there. All right, okay, thank you all. You're free to log off on that matter. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. matter so we'll come back to that Mr. Scrimshaw. Okay. Um, so I think um, we'll go back. I see Ms. Mills has joined the, the Zoom call. So let's go back to Samuel Mills and Rebecca Mills. Uh, this is cause numbers 23, 3, 72 and 77 ending in 08. We'll just go through the roll call again. Samuel Mills, are you present? Present, Your Honor. Great. Thanks, Mr. Mills. And then Rebecca Mills, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Sorry about that. Okay. Glad to have you here. And then Ms. Looney is present and Ms. Day is present. Yes, I want, sir. want today for Mr. Mills motions related to parenting plan and child support modification. Um, maybe we could hear first from um, Ms. Looney related to child support, the state's position, and we'll hear the position from the other parties. Your Honor, at the last review, um, we did ask for a copy of any child support order that Mr. Mills was presenting to the court. But we did not receive that. Um, child support will only be impacted if your honor grants the change of placement for the children. Um, our request at that time would just be for a bench order to end support as to Mr. Mills uh, with him having custody of the children. It was the state's understanding that Mr. Mills was not requesting support be entered regarding the mother and um, we would just need to have an order in place um, if there is a change regarding the the need for an end to support. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Ms. Looney. Okay, um, Mr. Mills, why don't you go ahead with your, your motion? I'll hear from you related to the, the parenting plan. And uh, then let's pause on the child support argument until we address parenting plan. So we'll hear your argument on the par parenting plan Then we'll hear from Ms. Mills and then we'll hear from Ms. Day. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I'm asking for temporary change of residence for my two sons for six months to be readdressed at six months. Um, I believe, given information, that living with me is the safest and stablest environment. Um, just starting off with her domestic violence evaluation, the summary, it states that she's a problematic risk for telling the truth, emotionally abusive and manipulative. It recommends that she gets a substance assessment, um, take some parenting classes on top of the six month DV classes. Um, 
she had a she she met a guy online and within two weeks moved in with him and then took the kids and slandered my name ran me through the mud said that I did all this and that and that none of it was true and I lost my kids I had no contact with them I had for two months I then got supervised visitations every other weekend when there was no need for all that it was just her manipulating the state and take trying to remove me from the picture so she could have new daddy step in um she and her boyfriend recently broke up and he informed me that this behavior that I experienced with her has continued the uh, manipulative behavior, such as she would egg him on with her phone out ready to record him so that she could pretend to be a victim. And um, she would verbally abuse his three-year-old in front of our children, such as saying, get the hell away from me. I'm not your mother. And she would call him names such as pardon my language, but fat fuck to his three-year-old son. And this was in front of my children. Um, he's also stated, her ex-boyfriend, that her continued behavior to neglect the children, such as sit on her phone all day and ignore them, continued. Um, and she stated to me before that she, this was when we were together, she stated that she can't handle our son Oliver, which is our youngest boy. Um, her ex-boyfriend stated that she told him that as well. And when he throws a tantrum, she just lets him do what he wants. And that would okay, um, would be like, he'll walk outside by himself, go sit in the car, and she'll leave him in there for hours. And Oliver's four years old? He is now four years old. Um, and she would do that just because she didn't want to deal with him. Recently, after she got her her DV evaluation, um, she stated to me, because she was trying to get me to say that she doesn't have a drinking problem, but in that same conversation, she told me she doesn't know how to relax without alcohol. Um, and the continue, and another example of the manipulation is we made our own parenting plan to work together and try and make this more civil, something that worked for both of us. Um, we just, all we did was we agreed we would keep Tina Day's original recommendations and just move the holidays around. Um, and when I went over to sign the parenting plan, that's what she told me. She said, it's exactly the same as what Tina Day put. We just changed the holidays. So I gave it a quick glance over, signed it. Um, well, her ex-boyfriend brought to my, brought to my attention that she took off the no new relationships for six months. And she did that intentionally. Um, I don't want a rotating door of men in and out of my kids' lives. I don't, I mean, she doesn't know these men before she's ready to move in with them. They could be terrible people that could harm my children. Um, and I know that I, I believe this is going to be a continued behavior for her to just keep moving from one guy to the next. And I don't want my children around that. I've maintained my house. I've maintained my job. It's very stable, very safe where I live. And um, in, as stated by the state, I did file if I am given temporary custody of my children. I don't want child support from her. I just want what's best for my children. All right, thank you, Mr. Mills, appreciate that. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, can I do one more thing? I, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they are in school. And I know it's going to be brought up that how am I going to take them to and from school because um, I work. I work a day job. Yes, I would leave before they have to go to school. Um, I have a very strong family support system that can help get them to and from school. And my sister already picks them up after school and babysits them. So her child care is my family. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Ms. Mills? Um, yeah, I, I wrote something down. Is it okay if I read it? Sure, that's fine. Okay. Um, I don't believe Samuel is looking out for the best interest of the boys. Um, when he found out that we were living with my parents after a breakup, um, he didn't reach out and ask how the boys were doing um, or anything. He did ask me, however, three days later to lower his child support amount by $200 a month. 
and take me to court over concerns he didn't care to speak to me about prior. Um, he's been supporting his girlfriend through college right now, but wants to take support away from his children, um, you know, in our time of need. Um, Samuel has also said on many occasions that he will sign off on the current custody arrangement. If I pay him the amount he's asking in our divorce, which I think is like $3,200, something around that amount, um, it's all about money to him. Uh, there's a lot of information in Samuel's declaration and parenting plan that is not true and events in Robert's messages that never took place. Um, I loved Robert's son, LJ, like he was my own, and I'm still in contact with him through his mother. Samuel also has our children's schedules wrong. He can't even get them to school. He can't get them to school with his work schedule and his girlfriend's school schedule without his mother spending the night or driving from way out Rose Valley, which can't be maintained long term. Uh, secondly, he states he handles all medical and education, which is a lie. Um, I've done all of that since day one for four and six years. Um, I've provided written statements from both of the boys' teachers that show that Sam has never made contact with either teacher. Um, he, he's never handled it. I have. Um, and thirdly, I have an incredibly strong bond with both of my children. I was a stay-at-home mom their whole lives until two months ago. Um, so we're more bonded than most parents and children today. Uh, both of these men supported my role as a stay-at-home mom because they know I'm an incredible mother until I want it out. Our boys go to Samuel's sister's house after school every day, and Samuel knows in his heart that if his sister saw any signs of neglect or mistreatment, that his sister would take a stand and back him. But she sees nothing but two boys who love their mom and their mom who's doing everything humanly possible to do the right thing for her children. I do worry about Oliver's temper tantrums. It's the same ones I witnessed Sam throw in our seven years together. I fear he will grow up and follow in Sam's footsteps. Um, the difference is that Oliver has two parents who love him and so many family members who adore him and show up for him. Sam didn't have that growing up. I believe Samuel and I should both be taking parenting classes to help Oliver navigate his big feelings. Um, I think it would benefit Oliver greatly if we were on the same page. Um, and because Sam went into such great detail, um, I never allowed my four-year-old to go sit in a car for two hours ever. Um, my son, Oliver, he has big feelings. And when he has big feelings, he isolates. That's what he does. That's what he's done since he was about two. Um, you know, he'll go sit under a table and he'll cry his big feelings. And then he'll go, mommy, mommy. And I know, okay, he's ready for a hug. He's, he's ready. You know, he worked through his feelings and I've seen many specialists about this. Um, we worked with Progress Center about it. I work with his teachers um, and they say, that's great. You know, he's, he's self-soothing. He's, he's working through it. Um, on one occasion, I watched him go out to the car. He was out there for 10 minutes. He buckled himself in his seatbelt and I was there. I was sitting on the front porch on our porch swing and he was in our driveway. It was not a hot day. It was a cold day. Um, I've never put my children in danger. Um, and I have a home, um, of my own. Um, in two months, I got a job. I bought a car. I got a house. Um, Sam wants to say I'm mentally unstable and all of these things. And, you know, I think I'm doing all right. Um, I'm okay doing any of the things in the DV assessment. He had things in his DV assessment also. Um, so yeah. Where are you in your, your progress in the DV um, I, I was waiting for it to be ordered. Um, I'm in counseling just for my own self, um, this court process. And he said, I drug him through the mud. You know, he's drug me through the mud. It's kind of, unfortunately what happens sometimes, um, it's taken a toll on me. So I'm in therapy. Um, but as far as the DV counseling, I haven't started. Okay. And, and what's your position related to Mr. Mills request for no exposure of the children to new romantic interest for a period of time. I am perfectly okay with that on both ends. I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm, I, I agree with that. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank um, you. I do. I do think that it would be detrimental to the children to, to move them. Um, they went through two big moves in the last month and a half, the last two months they moved, you know, from, he was my fiance. He, they moved from there to my parents' house with me and now into a new house. And, you know, we've maintained routine. Um, their teachers say they're doing great. Um, I, I do think another big move would, would be detrimental. And um, I, I don't see how he can get them to and from school. I don't see how he can do it. 
I can do it. My work schedule is very flexible. Um, like I said, I've been a stay at home mom for four and six years. All right. Thank you, Ms. Mills. Thank you. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I have not had a lot of contact with the two parties since I um, issued my report, but I've had some. They were working through an agreement um, when mother's relationship ended suddenly. Um, this is um, kind of a short-term relationship. This is the relationship that mother left the marriage for. And um, the children stayed with father during that time until mother was situated and then she took the children. What father reported is accurate. Um, I do have some concerns because many of the same allegations that were um, lodged by the most recent partner are similar to what father experienced and some of what was discovered in my investigation and by the uh, evaluation that was done. Um, I do think mothers should begin immediately in the domestic violence treatment. I think there should be absolutely no consumption of any kind of non-prescribed substance. That has been an allegation on both sides um, that has been kind of back and forth. And I think that that poses a risk to these children because neither of these individuals um, are able to be completely um, aware of what happens when they're using substances. I think father's made good steps um, since he has been down this road for the last couple of years, but I don't believe that mother has. I don't believe she takes it very seriously. Um, I have requested for several months for the children to be engaged in therapy um, to help them with the sudden transition and the loss of their father that they experienced at mother's um, request or behest, however she wants to word that. Um, they have not been in therapy. Um, the youngest child did receive some services from Progress Center, um, but they were very inconsistent and were discharged without receiving all the therapy that was needed. So this is not a, a case where, you know, the parents were super, super active. Mother was active in getting this child the services that they need. The, the services were needed. There was some compliance and mostly there was no compliance. So both these boys need therapy. They need to have some support emotionally to help them with all of these changes. This is the third big move in a very short period of time, part of which um, included um, a loss of their relationship with their father. Father remains in the family home. If the court makes a decision to change custody um, temporarily, it would be the family home that the children are accustomed to. They are there a significant amount of time each month now um, once those allegations were proven to be um, not accurate. So um, it is true mother has been the at-home parent. Um, I think there are a lot of concerns about that and it's difficult to know um, how much of that is, is true or not true or if it's just a regurgitation from the newest partner that the relationship has ended. I am absolutely strongly um, opposed to any exposure to significant others as well. Um, that, that was the crux of the problem with the initial separation and what these children experienced. So I will leave the decision about temporary change or not to you, but I have a lot of concerns and I'd like to see these boys get the support and help that they need. Both parents are working. Um, both parents now have their, you know, mom now has her own residence, um, but I don't, I don't know about anything else from that perspective. So. Do you see any, any specific dangers in either home to the children? The, the danger in mother's home is the partner's. Mother um, does have a tendency to um, go from immediately from partners that she's met online and then move in with them and move the children in with them. Um, I think that's the biggest concern. I don't see um, any concerns um, with substance abuse other than what I hear was admitted um, and in the domestic violence evaluation. And then the other concern would be the domestic violence. Um, there is a lot of dishonesty, a lot of manipulation, and that has continued throughout this investigation. And I would agree that mother should start that within the next 30 days. That needs to be addressed and moving forward. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Mills, you've, you've heard, um, Ms. Ms. Mills was able to hear your argument and then respond to it. And now you've heard her argument. I'll give you just a few moments to respond to her arguments. Um, I guess this isn't about money to me at all. I was hoping to touch on this at the end of the case, but since it was brought up, the debt that I'm asking for from her, I don't even want it. What I want from her, I want one thing, is I was court ordered to take a drug test. And if it came back negative, Rebecca would pay for it. That's all I want when it comes to debt. This isn't about money to me. I don't want child support. I don't want it. I don't care if she pays our debt or not. I just want a safe and stable environment for the kids. I've maintained the family home. I've maintained my job. 
I've been as consistent as I can be with my boys, given the restrictions of when I'm allowed to see them. Um, the it's, it's just very difficult because Rebecca has tried to erase me from their lives multiple times to the point to where she would leave, have my sister watching them. And I dropped by on my way home for 15 or 20 minutes to see my boys, even though it wasn't one of my designated days. And Rebecca found out and then was threatening me with content of court, which I'm not breaking any rules seeing my boys. I don't have a stay away order for my boys, but that's where her mindset is. All right. Thank you. Appreciate everybody's input. So right. the, the last parenting plan was entered on July 19th, 2023, where it indicates Ms. Mills is the custodial parent and, and father has weekly uh, residential time during the midweeks and then also alternating three weekends per weekend, Friday to Sunday. So the, uh, I think Mr. Mills' suggestion and request that uh, Ms. Mills involve herself in uh, a substance use disorder evaluation as re recommended by the domestic violence evaluator is well taken. So Ms. Mills, you're ordered to obtain a substance use disorder evaluation with collateral input, meaning uh, Ms. Day could chime in, Mr. Mills can chime in, in addition to the input that you give. Um, also, a parenting class uh, was, was recommended, um, such as a love and logic, as recommended by Ms. Lovely. Uh, you're required to do that. Regarding the domestic violence, that evaluation has already been completed, so you're ordered to commence that. Uh, we'll set a review in 30 days uh, to make sure that you've commenced in those efforts. Uh, so today is the 3rd. We'll be back here on February 7th for a review um, of the classes. Mr. Mills? Are, are we ending here? Or are we? I'm sorry, because I had something else on that I, a declaration that I submitted. Yeah, we're, we're ending. I, I've, I've given everybody an opportunity to share your verbal okay. thoughts. I've read all of your pleadings that you submitted. Um, so yeah, so we're so I'm giving my ruling at this point. Um, so okay. I'm not taking any additional content from the parties. Thank you. So we'll be back here on February 7th at 9 a.m. to review progress of the domestic violence treatment, the SUD evaluation, and any recommended treatment and you know, progress in the parenting classes. The uh, request for no romantic uh, interest exposure to the children is well taken. That'll apply to both. That'll be for a period of nine months. Uh, so you meet somebody. Um, and then nine months uh, from that date of meeting would be the first opportunity that the children would be exposed to that individual. So that'll be an order. Uh, related to um, the change in, in parenting plan, the, the concerns that I'm hearing is that uh, from Mr. Mills' perspective, that Ms. Mills is making an effort to uh, keep him on the sidelines or reduce his impact on the children's lives as manifested by prior actions. Uh, there's concerns on his end uh, about the treatment of Oliver, and Ms. Uh, Mills has given her response to that. Uh, there's also concerns related to alcohol consumption, um, and both parties uh, need to be careful on that, obviously. So I'm concerned about uh, the stability of the children moving in and out of different homes. That's obviously a big concern, second or third big move in the, the recent past. The uh, parties, when they were together, had made a decision that uh, Ms. Mills would be uh, the primary custodial parent at home, while Mr. Mills would be the primary breadwinner. And things obviously have changed. Now the parties have separated. Um, however, I'm not going to make a, a change related to the parenting plan. Um, I think the children's best interests are, are there's indications that, that, that they're threatened in the best interests are threatened in Ms. Mills' home. Um, however, um, I'm ordering the SUD evaluation, the domestic violence classes, and the parenting classes as uh, support, and hopefully there'll be some changes on that. We'll watch that carefully as we move forward to see if there's any additional concerns that are uh, come up. So I'm denying that request, so the, the July 2023 parenting plan will remain. There was a motion related to tax exemptions. Uh, the parties didn't address that in your verbal comments. I did read that in your in your written materials. And so for the tax year 2023, Ms. Mills, you can claim Oliver, and Mr. Mills, you can claim Emmett. 
for the tax year 2023. So that'll be the, the court's order related to that. Any questions or concerns or clarifications on the court's ruling? No, thank you, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Okay. Um, one moment, please. So from my perspective, I'm just speaking with my assistant. There's nobody in my waiting room. So they may be in the wrong waiting room. So other than this person who just came in. And that was a different person than that person. Check it out. Okay, thanks. All right. So I will, as far as the tax exemption, uh, I'll put that into writing and I'll create an order that memorializes that. And I'll also include the, I'm just jotting myself a note here. I'll also include the, the denial of the change to the parenting plan. And I'll also include the SUD parenting class and the DV and then the review date, which will be February 7th at 9 a.m. Okay. And you'll include, Your Honor, the nine month restriction. Thank you for that reminder. Thank you. Great, I'll do that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, um, moving to the next matter, if there's any other matters that are seeking a, a continuance or a, a striking of the hearing. Um, we are. Okay. Um, my, the other party, I think, submitted a form saying that he couldn't be here today um, and asking to put it off a week. Okay, and, and that, that just to make sure the record's clear, Miss, Miss, uh, yes. All right. Um, so this is cause 23377 and also 72 ending in 08. Miss uh, Day is appointed as a guardian ad litem. Uh, yes, I'm here, Your Honor. Okay, great. Thank you, Ms. Day. And I'll ask if Samuel Mills is on the line. Samuel Mills, are you here? Make sure you're unmuted and, and please state your name. Okay, and so this was a, there was some information that was filed by Mr. Mills. Uh, looks like it was filed on the 31st of January when, where he indicated that we had a compliance hearing set for the 7th of February. He indicated he had a commitment during that time frame. Um, for an apprenticeship class that was necessary or mandatory. So he's asking for the matter to be set over one week. And that is that your understanding, Ms. Mills? Yes. Okay, and I see that Ms. Looney is here also representing the state, thank you. Yes, sir. Um, and so there's, uh, so there, Ms. Mills is asking that the matter be set over one week, kind of in, in joint uh, tandem with uh, the request from Mr. Mills. Um, Ms. Looney, any concerns? No objections from the state, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Day, any concerns on your end? No, Your Honor. I think it's appropriate to set it over a week. And let me take a look at the 14th just to look at numbers. Looks like there's uh, 17 cases on. Um, Ms. Mills, if we were to set it over two weeks to the 12th, um, any concerns about that? I'm okay with it. I've done everything I'm supposed to do. Okay. Ms. Looney or Ms. Day, any concerns if we're to set the matter to the 21st? Your Honor, the state would be unavailable on that date, but as long as no child support was directly addressed, we would be okay with not being present that day. Okay. And I have no objection, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Day. So, Ms. Looney, just looking at the, the review, uh, I think we're there to review Ms. Ms. Mill's progress, so I don't see anything that directly or even indirectly affects uh, child support. Um, so, yes, sir. The only thing I believe that would impact child support would be if your honor decided to change the children's custody. Sure, sure. Okay. Well, I think we probably better than set it for the 14th. Uh, we'll set it for the 14th. So we, we will set it over just one week to the 14th of February. And that'll be at nine o'clock. So we'll move it to that date. Thank you, your honor. Thank you, your honor. Thank you, your honor. So your honor. Okay, welcome to you. And I'll ask if Rebecca Mills is on the line. Yes, I am. Okay, welcome to you, Ms. Mills. Um, I see that uh, um, Ms. Day, uh, Day is present. 
And Ms. Yes, Looney is present. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Okay, I had this noted that it's uh, we're here today uh, for a review hearing to check status on Ms. Mills' progress from the January 3rd, 2024 order uh, related to SED evaluation, DV evaluation, Love and Logic class, uh, Head Start, and the like. Um, so maybe, um, Ms. Day, do you, do you have any input on that? Or I can check with the other parties first. Um, I just have the information that the parties would report, that the parties would report to you. Um, they, they are moving forward. They are both attending domestic violence treatment and moving forward with that. I believe I've seen Ms. Mills' um, SUD evaluation, and I think that has also been filed. Okay. All right. Thank you. And Mr. Mills, uh, any, any comments you'd like to share? Um, no. Okay. All right. Ms. Mills? I don't have anything. Okay. So... I guess I guess this uh, you know our last the hearing of the order from January third um, just pulling that up here indicates um, just that um, Ms. Mills would need to get a substance use disorder evaluation and Ms. Mills did you have you completed that evaluation? Yes, I did. Great, thank you. And have you started? Uh, was there any recommended treatment? If so, have you started that? There was no recommended treatment, so no. All right, thank you. And then as far as the, the parenting class, have you have you registered for that? Um, I have registered. I think it starts on March 19th, so I'll start it then. Um, it is the Love and Logic trauma-informed, so I guess I just wanted to make sure that that was appropriate. Um, it felt like it might be more beneficial. Um, I just want to make sure it's the right one. Sure. Ms. Ms. Day, do you have any concerns about that particular class? I think that makes the most sense given the reports of the parties about their experience. I think that would be the most helpful. Great. Thank you for that input. Yeah, Ms. Wills, I'm comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with that, proceeding with that. Okay. And then the last item from the January 3rd order is uh, just checking with Ms. Mills if you have uh, completed a domestic violence a treatment plan as recommended by Ms. Lovely. Have you started uh, the treatment? Yeah, I've been to four, four classes already. Okay, so you're up to four now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and then, Mr. Mills, do you have any questions? Um, I guess any question I have just pertains to the next steps of the divorce. Um, where do we go from here to, I mean, I we've been going through this for about a year. I'd love to wrap it up as soon as possible. Do we got to both agree to a parenting plan and set a trial day, or what do we do? So I'm looking here, July 19th, looks like that was the, the temporary parenting plan that was put in place. Uh, there are some proposed parenting plans that have been filed subsequent to that. And I believe that was filed by, by you, Mr. Mills, that we submitted a proposed parenting plan and you're asking for a change to that. Um, so when, so, okay, so basically you've got the temporary parenting plan in place. The, the next step is you either agree to a final parenting plan uh, and have Ms. Day review that, or if you can't agree, then you note it up for the tr universal trial setting docket to have it set for a trial. Uh, so that would be the, the next step. And Ms. Day, do you have any comment on that? I think that would be the next step. I, the parties have attempted to reach a resolution on a couple of occasions, and it just seems to kind of fall apart at the last minute. So I would recommend we get it set for a mandatory settlement conference. I feel pretty confident that that would resolve the majority of the issues. There is not a lot of property to, to discuss. There's some difference of opinion on the parenting plan, um, but I think all in all with the mandatory settlement conference, we will probably get it resolved and that would be my suggestion. And then I would also just ask for the court to reiterate the um, not introducing romantic partners, even as friends to the children um, until that six month time frame has passed. I think that's been one of the ongoing issues and um, I don't want semantics to be the thing that brings it to a, you know, a crashing end because we're identifying somebody as a friend when there's maybe a clear intention that that's not exactly a hundred percent the exact. Mm. Okay. Thank you. And I'm just looking at the, uh, that is that restriction within the temporary parenting plan this day? 
It was in your previous order in January because that's been one of the conflicts um, from the very beginning of this case. So that was one of my recommendations and you ordered that in January that no new romantic um, partners were to be introduced to the children um, unless they had um, uh, nine months. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So in, thank you for that. Um, Ms. Um, Mr. Mills, so in response to your question, uh, there's kind of a, a two, 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 two avenues. One is a, a mandatory settlement conference. So the, the key word there is mandatory that has to occur. Then if that doesn't work, then it would be set for, for trial. Uh, so to get a mandatory settlement conference date, we have to move the case to what they call the trial setting docket. That's a, a docket where um, a judge takes a look at a particular week and then would assign a, a date and time for a mandatory settlement conference. And then you would all know what that date is. And then you would come to that mandatory settlement conference, uh, wherein uh, the judge would speak with each of you, some, usually individually, to ask what you want and what you think is important about the resolution of the case. And then the, the judge would kind of do you know, what they call shuttle diplomacy. I go to the other party after speaking to one and see if they can be some agreement and work out some agreements. Um, and then if there is, then orders are prepared and signed off on, and that resolves the case. Um, often, oftentimes, mandatory settlement conferences don't resolve all the issues. They re resolve a lot of the issues. And then sometimes there's just a, a few issues that remain. And if that a few issues just remain, then that uh, can be noted uh, for a trial setting. And it can be the trial can be on that one discrete or a few discrete issues that remain. So that's a long way for, uh, for me to say that I, I think what I'd like to do is set the case to the trial setting docket. And that's a um, where we where we, we can choose a mandatory settlement conference date and, and move forward in that fashion. So let me check touch base with Mr. Mills. Do you have any questions about that? Um, well, Miss Mills and I, I, she wrote up a a parenting plan that I signed off on, but I overlooked that it left out the no new uh, romantic partners. Mm -hmm. And so that's where that one fell apart. And if her and I come to an agreement, can we just submit it and be done with it? You, you can submit it. Uh, Ms. Day would need to, to review it and sign off on it. Um, and then if that's if it's signed off by all parties, yes, it could, could be presented and, and that would resolve it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Ms. Mills, do you have any questions? No, Your Honor. Okay. So I think what I'd like to do, um, it sounds like the parties may have uh, some potential for resolution of the matter. However, I would like to set it for the trial setting docket so you can choose that mandatory settlement conference date as a means of kind of moving the case forward. Uh, so those generally occur on Wednesdays. And Madam Clerk, those occur at um, at one o'clock, is that correct? Yes. Wednesdays at one. So I'll touch base with the, the parties. Uh, today we're the 14th, so we could look at setting this to the 21st of February. That's Wednesday, February 21st at 1 p.m. And that's that's via Zoom. Your Honor. Yes, Ms. Honey. The state is unavailable on the 21st, so we just request for the following week, if possible. Sure. And yeah. also remind the parties that um, if they're looking at agreement, we would need to have a copy of the orders they're proposing served on our office so that we can review the child support order and sign off on that as well. That's a great reminder. Thank you, Ms. Looney. Yeah, so any any type of a proposal just needs to be reviewed by everybody that's involved in the case. Uh, Mr. Mills, Ms. Mills, Ms. Day, Ms. Looney. Yeah, thank you. Um, Mr. Mills, Ms. Mills, are you available Wednesday, February 28th at 1 p.m. for the to choose a date for the mandatory settlement conference? That's, I am. That's to choose a date? That's to choose a date, correct. Uh, yes, Your Honor, I'm available. Okay, great. And Ms. Mills indicated that she's also available. So we'll set it to Wednesday, February 28th at 1 p.m. That's the universal trial setting docket. And the purpose will to be to choose a date for the mandatory settlement conference. Um, I'll just reiterate what, what Ms. Day indicated that uh, the introduction of romantic interests, the idea there is the protection of the children. Children are really quick to um, form bonds with people that their parents like. Um, and the concern is there that a relationship in the early early stages may not be very strong and it may 
wither and, and not last. And thereby the children are, are damaged because they had this nice relationship and things have, have faltered uh, and they're, they're harmed. Uh, so it's really critical that, that you don't do that. Um, so if, if, the, if there's concern that that is happening, uh, there could be a motion for contempt brought. And if contempt is found, then there can be uh, sanctions imposed or consequences imposed. So if you're doing that, stop it. Um, if you're not doing that, that's appreciated. So uh, just with that friendly warning and important warning, um, we'll conclude today's hearing. So double check, Ms. Looney, any final items on your end? No, Your Honor. Ms. Day? No, Your Honor, thank you so much. Mr. Mills, any final items on your end? No, Your Honor. Okay. And Ms. Mills, any final items on, on your end? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right. So we'll reconvene Wednesday, February 28th, 1 p.m. for the trial setting document. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.